But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together, learning, education, uh, learn how to refute the Muhammadan uh, and how to answer those who need answers. You know, uh, Muhammadans are very proud people. I mean, that's it, you know, we, like you ask a Muslim, what is the best thing you have in your religion? He said to you, we have one God. Oh, okay. And? Oh, you know, like we have one God. Huh. Okay, so, I mean, he's one. Okay, well, uh, so, and uh, what is next? You know, so, you know, I find that how, how proud they are is showing us how empty inside, because who cares if they are one or two or five or seven? The question is, if your God is a true God or not. So is your God is a true God or not? Today we'll do some examination and see how that works. My Skype is open. I invite any Muslim, any Mohammedan. Uh, just give me a text in Skype, you know, and I will take you immediately to see what you will say to us. As you see the title here, it says, Life Debate Why Allah Ordered a Woman to Kill Muhammad. We know the story how Muhammad was slaughtered by poison. Uh, I don't know if the word slaughter makes sense, but this is what it is. I mean, they killed him. But if you think about this story deeply, you will find that there is way beyond, beyond just Muhammad just being killed. You know, Islam is a religion who believe that everybody, anything happened to you, to anybody, is happened by fate. And fate is a predestiny. It is not a choice how you will die, how you will live, how long you will live, how long you will be poor, how long you will be rich, how long you will be sick. This is all is fate. This is what the Muslim believe. So when the Muhammad and they agree that Muhammad was killed by a woman, the word is murdered. Well, it doesn't matter, my friend. You know, like I don't know, like I don't like to use the word murder because murder is a crime is unjustified. You know, uh, murder is, you kill somebody, he don't deserve to be killed. This is what murder means. Muhammad was killed by a woman who her, Muhammad, he killed all her family and her tribe. He slaughtered them all. So how, how we can call it a murder? Anyway, uh, as long as the Muhammad and they believe that everything is a fate, even adultery, even, even how many times you go to the bathroom, it's fate. It's written in the book of Allah. Even when you sleep with a woman or a man, a woman sleep with a man, it's written there. Actually, the Muslim they have a hadith says that uh, the name of the men who will sleep with the women is written over her vagina. So a woman, she is not the one who chooses really who will sleep with her. 
this doesn't matter if it's a fornication or marriage or anything, any form of sexual relationship. This is not a choice. It is written there. Therefore, as long as everything is written, even, even the sin of Adam, if you will go and read the funny yellow pages of Muhammad, I see, I see a Muhammadan here is very upset in the chat, and he is calling me names. My friend, you know, you can call me names, but that will not affect anything. I mean, you can, you can say whatever you want about me, but still we need an answer. As, as you see, Muslims are leaving Islam left and right. And so you, you should do better, my friend. I advise you. So look what happened here. <clears throat> uh, according to Muhammad, which is very funny, Muhammad is always, you know, a very weird, silly person. He, he, he says things which doesn't make sense. He claimed that Musa and Adam, they met. How they met, don't ask Muhammad. You know, you ask Muhammad, you're in trouble. The Quran, chapter 5, verse 101, it says, ask no questions. Ask no questions. The Prophet said Adam and Moses argued with each other. Now, you know, I think I'm assuming that Adam and Moses, they met maybe in Walmart. I mean, it happened. You know what I mean? Moses and Adam, they argued. I think there is like maybe two years between Moses and Adam. You know, maybe Adam like is two years older than Adam. Or maybe Moses, I think Moses is older. What do you think, Muslims? How in the world Moses and Adam they met? Anyone can tell us? Huh. Muhammad is talking, Popo is coming. So Adam and Moses they argued. You know, and I, I always told Moses, you know, Moses he's a Jew, you know, you know, Khabibi Moshe. Why are you Moshe? You are are good, our grandfather Khabibi. Hmm? Khabibi Moshe, isn't it? This is your grandfather Khabibi? Look what Moshe, how rude he is, Moshe. So Moses, Moses and Adam they argue. With each other and Moshe he said to Adam, uh, Khabibi Adam, you are the one Khabibi, our father who disappointed us, Khabibi, and turned us out of the paradise, Khabibi. What the heck? I mean, why Moses is doing this? Hmm? And look here, the funny is that Muhammad, the full Muhammad, he keeps telling to the Muslims that Moses was a Muslim. Don't Muhammad keep saying Moses was a Muslim? I mean, how many times we heard the Muhammadan, the followers, the kissers of the black stone, keep saying, Moses is a Muslim, Isa is a Muslim, Adam is a Muslim, uh, you know, uh, Trump is a Muslim, uh, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin is a Muslim. I mean, everybody is a Muslim. My cat is a Muslim. The chicken, I opened the, ch I, I opened the egg, I found, alhamdulillah, on the egg. If they opened the... Uh, 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 the union, they find the name of Allah. Uh, uh, a goat, she have the name of Allah. The tree is praying to Allah. I mean, everything is a Muslim. Okay. But how come Moses is a Muslim prophet? And he died believing that Adam is the reason for all sin, which means original sin. Hmm? What do you think? Any uh, any Muhammadan have a have a comment can be helpful. Uh, obviously, this man, so called Muhammad, who changed his name by the way, Muhammad is not his real name, but this guy is obsessed with Jesus. He wanna instead of uh, you know people praising Jesus, he wanna be the praised one. Uh, a Muslim, he is, uh, his, his your comment by the way is not is not coming, but I'm going to play your comment in the screen, uh, just for uh, fun, you know? I wanna help you. Uh, so he said, my God is a buffoon. I don't know who is the buffoon, you know? We can go and talk about that. I never heard of a God, he sat in the top of a rooster. So who is the clown? I mean, I saw in the circus, people jumping in the top of a horse, in the top of an elephant in the top of, uh, you know, a rope. But a god, he sat in the top of a rooster. Who is the clown? Abdul, you brought this to your prophet. Thank you very much.
The god who sat in the top of her rooster, he is really weird. I heard of a cowboy. Somebody riding a horse. But somebody riding a rooster. Okay. And uh, we continue. You deserve what you, you this is what you ask for. You are talking to Christian friends, don't worry, be happy. So Moses argued with Adam and he said to him, You are our father, he disappointed us. Uh, because of you, we turn out of paradise, which means Moses never was a Muslim because it's done against this idea, as you see. And this is supposedly an argument happened after the death of Muhammad. Sorry, after the death of Moses. Uh, we have Muhammad Nasif, is, uh, he want to refute me. Ah, Muhammad Nasif, you can't refute anything. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let us call Muhammad Nasif. <laughs> Yes, Muhammad Nasif. How are you, my friend? You embarrassed me yesterday. I do? Do what? I, I want to understand why you make everyone to call a donkey if they, if they cannot find the evidence uh, to refute you on a particular topic. I will, I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Do you believe in the Quran? Yes. Okay. The Quran says that those who carry books but do not know what is inside it, they are donkeys. So, do you agree with that or not? Well, I don't know this this passage, but uh... right, this is my business. Here we go. You are donkey again. So, why you are why you are upset from me? So, I am practicing what Allah told me to say to you. Chapter sixty-five, verse number five. It says, "The example of those who they are in charge of the Torah." You know. Then they failed to carry it. You know, they, they carry the Torah, but they are like an ass carrying a book. They don't understand, you know, what they are carrying. So you just told me I never heard of this verse. You are a donkey again. And, and look, and you are, the one who well, text, you are the one who texted me, and now you said to me, I can refute you. So why, if you cannot, if you don't know what is in your book, why you text me and you say, I can refute you? Did I force you to text me and say, I can refute you? I don't remember whole book, right? Like, uh, who cares? You know nothing about your book. What do you know about your book? Okay, now you said to me, I will give you a chance. You said to me, I can refute you. Right, let us go to the topic. So you're a prophet, he said, that he is dying because of the poison. Who is the one who killed your prophet, Allah or that woman? The prophet died his own death three years after poison. Who, do you who know care, who care my poison? friend? Uh, listen, listen. What is the special three years? It's your poison? prophet yeah. who is saying that. Are you saying to me, you know what happened what to Muhammad? Three year poison. What? Yeah, he died his old age, man. He's old. Oh, man. so you are saying he's a stupid now. He is saying things not true. Well, I believed he had pains. He had what? He, he had pains uh, because of those poison. Um, but he did not uh, that's not like 100 percent evidence he is dead from the poison okay so the person is dying and he is saying to you i'm dying because of the poison and you muslims who came uh, 1400 years after you don't think this is what why he died i mean so your prophet he was wrong and isn't it the quran says that everything so the, the everything the prophet he says is true uh, uh, yeah, isn't that's it that's allah true. inspire muhammad to say everything only truthful is it, are you saying your prophet is wrong? Well, maybe he's delirious, like the Sahabi said. He was what? He's delirious, delirious, delirious. Delirious. Yeah, he went. Uh, he's you know he's going crazy. Yeah, yeah. At the end, he's dying. He's old. You know. Ah, uh, okay. So now, uh, so even that will make it more horrible. So if Muhammad is going crazy at the end of the time, as you are saying, and you agree about that, that's mean Allah He made him go crazy. So why Allah made him go crazy? You try to fix the first one, and now you have a big hole in the head of Muhammad. You mean why he died? He's gonna die like. But listen, listen, people. listen. You try to fix the stupidity of this hadith that Muhammad he died by poison. So you come now with different excuse saying that your prophet he died because obviously he's getting ill, he is getting old, and he is he went crazy. So if a person he went crazy, who is the one who made him crazy? Allah. Why Allah made him crazy? Solve this problem now. Go ahead. I'm listening. Only Allah knows best. 
only Allah knows best. But do you think cannot... do you think it's a blessing from Allah that his prophet die crazy? A blessing. I think it's uh, Allah knows best. Hey, we go. So does. anything I say to you, you will say to me, Allah knows best. Is that an answer, really? I'm asking you. Isn't it? Is isn't it? This is a. Is that a good thing? I mean, why Allah would make Muhammad die crazy? And as long as Muhammad in the last few years of his life is crazy, well, how do you take Quran from him? That's mean all the Quran he gave to you, at least at the end of the three, four years, it was a stupid, crazy Quran because the guy is crazy. I think Muhammad, he died. He have maybe some sickness. Nobody really know at that time. They don't have autopsy. No, you discover it yourself. You know, you are the one who is doing autopsy now. You know, you discover it. You open his head. And you are the one who agree, isn't it the Sahaba, they say Qad Hajar al-Rasul, the Prophet went crazy. So, and you are the one who quote that for me, right? Yes. Okay, so the Sahaba, we have witnesses that the Muhammad is, is, is mentally ill. Well, you know, when you're about to die, you, um, you your brain not going to work properly. So, well, Muhammad, oh, Muhammad, well, Muhammad the brain never work. Okay, Muhammad the brain never work. You know, we can prove it well, so how, easy. How he got so many followers? Okay, so it so doesn't matter. You he know, so Hitler is a crazy. You know, he he drive the whole world uh, not. And if he win the war, you will see how many people worship him. So who care about how many? You know, none of you is a follower anyway. Do you clean your ass with three rocks? Do you shake your penis three times? Do you enter the bathroom with the left uh, leg? Do you do you do refuse to leg, do you yes. refuse to wear uh, do you refuse to wear jeans? Do you refuse to to uh, to grow your your uh, mustache? Do you refuse to have a a, a, a pant touching your your, your uh, ankle? I mean, you none yes. of you none of you Muslims you know do you no, refuse, do, do you refuse to listen to music? Do you refuse to watch movie? Do you refuse to to listen to songs? You don't. No, no, well, sure. like you said, I tried to do what is halal. Well, what tried? You know, he himself, he never tried. He said to you, don't do that. And he was doing all of those. So Muhammad obviously is mentally ill. You know, when Muhammad, he says to you, don't play music. And then Abu Bakr, he go to his house, he find girls dancing and play music for him. When Muhammad... No, listen, listen. Let us, prophet, let us focus. Let us focus. Okay, I, I want to give you, I want to give you an opportunity. Listen, listen, listen. Nobody would I want to give you an opportunity to prove to me that Muhammad was not a stupid from the beginning of his life. What do you think? As long as you mention this. I will give you an opportunity in front of everybody. I'm going to listen. To prove to me that Muhammad was a smart, intelligent man. He is not stupid, crazy from the beginning of his life. Go ahead. Well, it's not whether he is naturally intelligent. It's whether his prophecy come true, and they did. None of his prophecy come true. Okay, okay, give, okay, give me one. Okay, give me one prophecy come true. Byzantine rebound. No, when nobody the Byzantine. The Byzantine. It was no. The Byzantine. It was about the Arab, the people in front of him. They will be victorious, and he said to them. Don't ever fight the Turkish as long as they don't fight you. And he claimed that uh, the Turkish are Gog and Magog. So Muhammad, he claimed that the one who will conquer Byzantine, Byzantine, it was the Arab. And those are the one who live in his time. That's why he went in the war of Tabuk. And he, he, he went there, he did it far, he failed. He came back shish kebab. So Muhammad, he was just saying things to encourage his men. And what happened is the opposite. As an example, if we go right now to the Quran, you're a prophet, he promised the people that if 100 of you are uh, patient and uh, standing firm, in chapter 8, verse number 65. Oh, hmm. messenger. Okay, let me, let me ask you. So if you have a God, he promised you that 100 people can win against uh, 1,000. Do you think Allah can make it happen or not? Rose the believers to fight. If there are 20 amongst you, patient and persevering, they will vanquish 200. Mm. If 100, they will vanquish a 1,000 of unbelievers. So these are the people. Well, we know that uh, Angel Jibril and other angel already helped them. Uh, we know, yeah, that, that's, not, that's not the question. Listen carefully. So is if Allah, he said, 20 can fight 200. That's mean everyone can fight 10. That's mean it should happen, correct? They should win. 
well, this is not context about which battle they're talking No, it about. says, you know, we can go and read the story. There's Badr al-Kubra or Badr al-Sughra. So your, your potato, Muhammad, he promised the Muslim to win one to 10. They went to war and they lost. And the proof of that is the verse after it. They came back and their tail between their legs. Look what he said to them. Verse number 66. Now, Allah has lightened your burden, knowing that you have a weakness. Allah, now he found that he have a weakness. <laughs> now he found the weakness. <laughs> what happened? So now Allah, He knows that you have a weakness. So He light. So what is the reason He lightened your 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 burden, which is fighting one to ten? Now He discovered that you have a weakness. <laughs> so what kind of God? You know what kind of God? Listen, what kind of God? He says to you, one can win against ten. Your Abdul, he go to fight, he gets spanked. He come back, he says, well, Prophet, you told us one got one against ten. When I want to kneel, kneel, you know. And then Muhammad, he took fix it right away. Allah is ready. He said, okay, listen. Now Allah, he lighten your burden. Because now he find out, he just found out that you have a weakness. Okay? How that happen? So, so you're telling me in verse, in this verse, originally Muhammad is making up the verse. And you think my friend, you tell me if Allah is if Allah is talking, what kind of God he says now he found out that you have a weakness. Don't you Muslim you say to us, only Allah knows the unseen, he knew everything. So do Allah knew that they have a weakness when he get a weakness or not? I don't know which battle uh, it doesn't lost. matter, it doesn't Can matter. Focus focus I with me think. with the verse now. Allah lighten your burden, knowing that there is a weakness on you, when he knows that. Actually, the verse says, Wa not knowing, and he, and he knew, now he found out. He just, he just found out, actually, and now he know. Wa alima, change the translator, this is Yusuf Ali, no, this is Kari, it is this, a different idiot. Uh, Hilali and Khan. Quran from Yusuf Ali. It's my Quran. Okay, this is your Quran. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> For he knows that there is a weakness, but this is false translation. He just found out. Alima. Who? How Allah Alima? Allah is Alim or Alima? Alim is someone who knew from the past. Alima is just now he found out. And I will put it for you on the screen from Yusuf Ali if you wish, no problem. <clears throat> if there are hundreds of you patient and persevering, the vanquished 200, mm -hmm. the thousand. So you're saying they went from. 10 time multiplication to two time multiplication from one to ten to one to two do you see your, your god allah is a funny god so if god he promised that one can fight ten i mean who care how many if a god he promised me even if there's a 10 million not 10 men if god is the one is with me that's it i'm not fighting by my my own power i'm fighting obviously by the power of god so if god he promised me i will win no matter but look what the verse is saying now Allah he knew. Now he found out that you have a weakness spot on you. So how he fixed that the, the knowledge because of that knowledge, because now he just found out after they lost. Now because we found out, well, one can fight two. So from one to ten to one to two. What kind of God is God? So your prophet is a crazy man. He made he made extreme promises like like when you when you prophet when you prophet my, my friend when you prophet he says that uh, uh, Allah he was the most weak person in six and then he invoked Allah and he sent him a dish of shish kebab he ate it and he get the power of forty men is that a is that a speech of a mentally ill person or somebody have intelligence this is metaphor. Metaphor, guys, the power, the power of 40 men in intercourse, this is a metaphor. The power of intercourse, it's a metaphor of what? 
this is um, he eat he eat the food uh-huh. then suddenly he get he better performance he better he performant in what better performant in what for the men perform he visit all his wife every night okay so now he got the dish of the food and then right away his penis like boing ding, boing 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 like okay so so okay i, w- I want to focus with you so as long as you agree this is what happened who is the one who kicked that cook that dish is it allah i don't know who cook it maybe okay. his wife isn't you the, the one the one who sent the dish is allah it's not the wife of Muhammad. So what Allah wife... blessed the dish. Allah huh? blessed. No, Allah, he sent him the dish. He sent him with Jibreel. He invoked Allah. Allah, he sent him the angel Jibreel, and he have the dish of the kebab. Muhammad, he ate it. And then his penis like boing, you know, like, like a rocket, you know? So don't you Muslim, you say that if Allah, he is God, and he can fix things by saying B is going to be? So why Allah he needed to send him a dish of shish kebab? What kind of God is God? Why not? Why he he cannot? Well, okay. Why? He, but that that's me. That's me. That's me. Okay. That, why that's, he have to say B for everything? Okay. Say, well, and, and, he so say Allah he don't say, he B. Don't say B. Oh, so Allah will not use the word B with the penis of Muhammad. So he go to the kitchen, and then he make a dish, and that's mean Allah he have shish kebab there. He have the beef. You know he slaughter a cow, and then he made a shish kebab. And then he put some spice from India, you know, and then he said and add some Viagra and then he sent it to his prophet. Now, so this is for you is not to prove that Muhammad is mentally ill. First of all, what kind of a prophet he go and he start telling people about his penis? Why I want to go right now? Let us say I have a problem there. Why I want to go in public? I have 800 people listening now. Why I want to tell the people here that what, what is the problem with the penis? What is their business? Isn't this is a sign of mental illness? I do not know this hadith. Where okay, who cares? Okay, let, let me show you another hadith. Uh, there is a hadith that says clearly that Allah he needed to fix the brain of Muhammad. Muhammad was a stupid. Is there any hadith like that? I don't know this hadith. Okay, you don't know every hadith I show you. What's wrong with you? I mean, well, I don't know what I don't know. Muhammad. You okay. only know Listen, hadith. okay, let me show you this one. Okay, here uh-huh. we go. Uh, here, here, here we go. Allah, he sent two angels. One of them is Jibreel. And they, they brought with them two dishes, one has faith and one has wisdom. And then they, they opened the chest of Muhammad and they put all the faith in the, you know, the, uh, the, the vein of Muhammad. So why Allah needed to make a surgery to Muhammad to give him wisdom? Is that because Muhammad was stupid or because Muhammad was so smart? Farid already refused. My friend, don't judge. Just a Fifi. If you want to mention kids, you know I will hang up on you. If you if you want, call him. Call call the, the call the girl. Call the girl. Don't mention. Don't mention. Don't mention the names of those who don't dare to call me. If you want, call the 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 girl you are talking about. She can join us and she can tell me her answer. Otherwise, she's a potato. Now answer me. So Allah He is installing a dish of faith and wisdom in the vein of Muhammad. Isn't it, this is a proof that Muhammad obviously need to be fixed and his wisdom is not there? When he was young, he strengthened Muhammad. What is young? I mean, Muhammad, he become a, a prophet after the age of 40. And now already he is a prophet. And this is long after he become a prophet. Absolutely and now Allah, this is when, when, this is when Muhammad, he went to heaven. So now, and my friend, also, listen, 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 why Allah he need, he t- and by the way, do you Muslim believe that wisdom come in dishes? No, but we believe that for Jibreel bring for, for special for Muhammad. Oh, so uh, there is a special dish for Muhammad, but what do you mean? No, we don't believe you just said yes. So you agree that Allah, he sent Muhammad two dishes, one dish full of faith and the other dish is full of wisdom, correct? And Jibreel put to his chest. Yes. Uh-huh. So do you agree? You Muslim, you believe? Yeah, and like you see, we are we are trying to prove that Muhammad is a crazy. Obviously, all of you are crazy because who in the world want to believe that wisdom come in dishes? 
Who in the world believe that believe come in dishes? And then a gold tray, gold tray containing a gold bowl, a full of belief and wisdom was abroad. And then Jabril stuffed his chest uh, and his throat, blood vessels with it. So we are trying to prove that Muhammad is crazy, but obviously all of you are crazy. His, his wisdom is something physical. But two children. Listen, listen. Listen. listen, listen. Focus with me. Focus with me. Is wisdom something physical? We can put it in a dish. Muhammad, uh, My friend, I want an answer. According to you, as a Muslim, is wisdom something physical? We can put it in a dish. Normally, no. But for uh, normally, what do you mean normally? Lo, explain to us. No, guys. Normally, no. Explain. Elaborate. Allah don't give this dish to anybody but Muhammad. But doesn't matter. This is the question now. So Allah, he have wisdom in dishes. Wisdom in Islam is something physical. You can eat it. You can stuff it. It's like making a chicken with rice. It's a holy, like how you have a holy water. We have What holy dish. water, my friend? Water is water still. I mean, we did not make the whole, well, water is water. We are using still water. We are not using something that not there. Water is still a water. But we are talking about the wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. Wisdom is about education, knowledge intelligence uh, you know all those things together they will, they will create wisdom so uh, your god he sent a dish of wisdom and, and what about the dish of faith uh, do you muslims okay when you when you become a muslim did you receive any dish of faith and then you become a muslim like when your mom she gave birth to you she she's a muslim hmm? and then she look at you oh my son is weak he's not a good weak he's not good strong in faith so did she give you a dish, a dish of wisdom and you ate it and you become a strong muslim no, this special only for Rasulullah. Ah, <laughs> the special donkey. That's what we are saying. Muhammad is so donkey to the point we need to get him a dish of uh, food uh, to, for his penis. I mean, everything this guy, he was a stuff. His penis was a stuff by the shish kebab. His faith was a stuff by a dish. And even his wisdom, he came in, in a dish. So what he have then? Nothing. This guy is all screwed up. His penis not working. His brain is not functioning. And his belief is not there. So Allah, he needed to fix everything, starting from the penis and then with the faith and then with that, going through the, the wisdom. This one for Muhammad, not for the... Exactly. Religion. That means Muhammad is so much junkie, man. I mean, this junkie, he needed a lot of work. It's like going to the junkyard. Not everybody needs that, you know, because <laughs> Muhammad, he have no motor. He have no battery. His penis is not working, the battery is off. His motor, his heart is not functioning. Look, the hadith says even, they open his chest all the way to his testicles from here to here, and they took everything off. I mean, the guy, he is so junky, man. I mean, what they found, and they clean it out. Why Allah, he need to do surgery for such a man? I mean, obviously, okay, did Allah make a surgery like this for Moses? Allah talked to Moses. See, Musa is right away ready. He's a smart. He do not need to make a surgery for him. And Allah never spoke to Muhammad. So after the surgery, Muhammad is still stupid. Like now, this is this is the story. Muhammad he told, he said, he he mentioned after the surgery. Obviously, Muhammad is still donkey because there's nobody will mention such a story unless he's a donkey. Who's going to believe in such a garbage? There's two angels. They come here to my house and they cut my chest from here to here. And then they took off my heart and my abandonment and blah, 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 blah. And then they brought a dish of uh, fish and a dish of wisdom and blah, 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 they put it inside. And then what? You became a scientist? After this surgery, what happened to Muhammad? Did he become so smart? He become very, he have prophecy, he have more faith. We are laughing at his prophecy. Isn't it your prophet who prophesied that the sun set in murky water? Isn't it your prophet who prophesied that the women have a sperm coming from her breast? And we mentioned that last time. And I show it That's to you. And you said, and you said I accept Ibn Kathir. And okay. Ibn Kathir, he is saying that. Sunset is for Dhul Karnain. And it's not literal. Yeah, but who is the one who told us about it? Muhammad. And isn't it Muhammad in the Hadith, he agree? He said, this is the sunset in uh, murky water, in muddy hot water. He's talking about from, because Dul Karnain do that. 
Do, do, do what? What's your name? Do what? What he do? He saw, he found, uh, he viewed the sunset and he spread the story, but it's not literal. There is not, uh, it looked like. Uh, uh, from his, uh, let me help you. My English is not good, but I think I know the word you want to use. From his perspective, correct? Correct. Yes. Uh, see how nice I am. I'm helping you. But my friend, uh, <laughs> but he agree. You see, you Muslims are really funny. You try to duct tape your prophet, who obviously mentally ill, and let us go and see how Muslims, they try to, to fix this issue. Hmm? I will put the sunset, here we go. I, I found a picture. This is the sunset here. Hmm? I will put it on the screen. So the Muslim, they claim, the Muhammadan, this is a better word from Muslims, actually, uh, that when Zulqarnain, he arrived to the beach, he thought that the sun is sitting, disappearing inside a muddy water. Is that correct? This is what the Muslim they claim. Is that correct? This is a hadith. Yeah, this is another question. I'm asking you. Is that what you are saying? That in his in his eye by eye, he thought Zulkarnay, not Allah, that the sun is sitting inside the water. And that is a muddy hot water, correct? And this is the ocean. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, can you show me the word ocean in the verse? It says a spring of water. You see, your prophet is so stupid, he cannot keep his mouth shut. He talked too much. So he added the word spring. So your prophet, if he add the word, uh, he if he add the word like he thought, we okay, we can let it go. If he add the word ocean, we can let it go. But he never said the word thought, and he never said the word ocean. He said a spring. A spring is just a water, like one foot, two foot water. This is what spring is. Spring of water is, is a hole from the ground, and there's water coming out. That's it. So there's no ocean, and the Muslims are trying to duct tape the madman Muhammad, who is fabricating a story. And if we go to the verse in the Quran, here we go. It says here, he found it sitting in a spring of water. There's no ocean. Where is the ocean? Why are you Muslims adding things? Why are you Muslims trying to fix the stupidity of your prophet? Here we go, read it with me. Do you see where it says, he thought it appeared to him? Or it says, he found it. He found it. So when we say we found, it's a finding, it's a discovery. It is not his guessing. He found it. And who is the one who's talking? It's Allah. It's not even the guy. So he found it sitting where? Can you read for me? Until when he reached the setting of the sun. No, no, he found, he found it found where? It. He found it where? Set in the spring of murky water. Okay. Uh, so how, he how you it. are saying to me, how is your Quran? He thought that the sun is sitting in a spring of murky water. I'm listening. Here we go. Explain that to me. Well, let Zulkarnain, Zulkarnain, see it, not... Uh... What do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, my friend, it's a spring of water. It's just a little tiny water. You know, the jacuzzi is bigger. So how in the world he thought, you Muslim, you claim he thought, but the one is talking is yeah, Allah. And he never thought. No, he did, not, Allah... he did not. He did not thought. He said he found it sitting. He found it. He reached the place where the sun set. And then, but where is the place where the sun set? This is stupid because sun set everywhere. Even in my backyard, sun set. Uh, the sun set in uh, sunrise in my in my house too. That's stupid. I do not need to go anywhere. So he keep going, he keep going, he keep going until he found where the sun set and he found it setting in a spring of hot water. What do you think? I think it's not clear. What? Uh, okay, what? so why is al Qurnain he said the spring of, why, the way Allah is saying, he found it sitting in spring of murky water. I mean, uh, this one is not clear for you? He found it sitting in a spring of, uh, of murky water. Uh, what is not clear? 
he found he found the can mean his his he saw like uh, not you know he think it's not like uh, well it says he think it says he found it this is an Allah he agree he found it he didn't say he thought he didn't say he was wrong he agree and here we go your prophet he agreed to did your prophet agree <laughs> here we go this is your prophet uh, you know you Muslim you know the Quran better than your prophet. And now what the Muslim they were saying, it doesn't say that, CP. The Prophet, he did not say that, CP. Or, the other solution, this hadith is reported by Susu from Fufu to Dudu. Dudu, he said to Nunu, that from Sufyan, from Ibn Hussein, from Utayba, from Imam Murrah, from Ibn Ibrahim, from, from, from Abu Zur. But Abu Dhar, everybody knows that Abu Zur is a liar. Like, come on. All of us, we knew he lied. I mean, it is famous, that guy. I mean, suddenly they are, they, they, they will find it. They will, they will find a problem with it. That's it. I mean, come on. This guy is a liar, brother. This guy is a liar. There's no way this is true hadith. I mean, like, what the heck? If this hadith is not a true, why you Muslims, you write it for 1400 years? And now because of a Christian prince, suddenly all those guys became liars? So, no, no, he said to Harun. Harun, he said to Safun. Safun, he said to Hassun. Hassun, he said to Hakum. Hakum said to Atuba. Atuba said to Ibrahim. Ibrahim, he said to Zuzu. Zuzu said to Mimi. Mimi said to Dudu. Dudu is very well known to be a fraud. What the heck? I never said can be fraud. I well, I, who cares? I so no, you are saying to me, I mean, what you will say, uh, I keep saying to you, this is what the prophet said, and you said to me, maybe, maybe. What maybe? It's in the front of you, and the prophet said, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah. This is the guy who was sitting behind him. You know, he actually is doing the right thing. Don't never sit in the front of Muhammad. He just ate a dish of shish kebab, and his penis never goes sleep. So I was sitting, now we understand why he's sitting behind. And I was sitting behind the Messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, who asked Muhammad, do you know where this sun this set? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best because your prophet, his, he worked in Nasa, my friend. Come on. And look, the Muslims are mushrikeen. They associate the knowledge of God with the knowledge of a fool man. His name is Muhammad. We need a plastic surgery to fix his wisdom. Okay, Allah and his apostle knows best. Muhammad, he loved to hear this. You know, when he said to him, Allah and his apostle knows best. Ah. This is what he is actually. This is why he's asking the question. Do you know? Because he want to show off. You know, this is what the fool do. Do you know where the sun set? That guy, he have no idea. Oh, Allah and His message knows this. And Muhammad now continue. He want to show us how much knowledgeable he is. He said, "It set in a spring of warm water." Hamia, actually, Hamia is not warm. Hamia is hot. So why must they lie and they say, this is Karnain, he thought, and this is from his perspective. And you know, you, you, you want to do that, you better shut up the mouth of your prophet, because this guy, he talk a lot. And now we go back to zero. So we prove now that your prophet is obviously mentally ill. He needed a plastic surgery to fix him. You know? Are you with me? I'm with you, but... Uh... Okay. He needed a wisdom surgery. Faith surgery, even faith is he have none, you know. And then in the top of that, he he think that he is a doctor. He knows science. He knows how the baby is made. He claimed that Allah taught him that. He knew where the sun set. He knew even where the sun rise. He found Zulkarnain story that he found people of Gog and Magog, correct. And then Zulkarnain he built a dam between us and them. How in the world can that can happen? I mean, I can go around the dam and come to you. I do not speak Arabic, but uh, is there a word for sun he found it was, not he found Wajadaha, it, like... Wajadaha, Wajada from where, where, you know, he found in the but past there tense. is another word, he didn't say it is setting, it, it set. Okay, He's my friend, okay, 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> next, who is next? He did not say. I mean, look, we're talking to those people, like, you know, talking to the wall. Like, what the heck? I mean, I just showed you what your prophet said, and you are saying to me, but he did not say. He did not say. What do you mean? The prophet, he asked the guy sitting behind him, do you know where the sun set? The guy, he said, Allah and his abuzdol, he knows best. 
Muhammad, he did not keep his mouth shut. He continued talking. He said, it's set in a spring of warm water, hot water. Duct tape religion. So look what happened. Muhammad killed by poison. Muslims believe that anything can happen to you, happen only by the will of Allah. Therefore, the one who killed Muhammad is Allah. Why Allah is doing that to Muhammad? Any Muslim? And why Allah, he saved Jesus and he let Muhammad die by poison? According to Muslim, Allah, he saved Jesus. Okay, wonderful. In Muhammad Nasif, Nasif, I will call you if you bring with you a sheikh. Give me a sheikh, any one of those you mentioned their names. Call them, let, us, let, let them join us in a call, conversation, so we can have fun. Give, call your sheikh, okay? And I will take your call. So, as you see, this man is mentally ill. He speak about religion. He claimed that he have knowledge of God. And then he present his God in a very funny, stupid way. He claimed that everything is a fate. Everything, even when you go to the bathroom, even your diarrhea, even, you know, anything, anything, is there. It is written. And that thing which is written is going to happen to you. You know, there was two child, uh, sorry, one child. Uh, he died. A Muslim child from a Muslim family, if we can say. Aisha, she said, after the funeral, well, you know, there's a happiness for this uh, child. He will be a bird in paradise. Aisha, she think that because he did not commit sin, well, he will go to heaven. Muhammad, he told her, don't be stupid. Why? Because Muslims believe in faith, as Muhammad told them. He replied, it might be otherwise, which means he might go to hell. Oh, why, why it might be the other You know, he was very young. He never reached the age of sin. He never commits sin. So why it might be the other way, which means going to hell? He said, because when Allah, he created the, anyone, he created them for paradise or he created them for hell when they are in their father backbone, not lions, as the translation is saying. Backbone is specifically what the word is saying. So he created who would go to hell and go to heaven before even your creation. He decided that. So this child, he never reached the age of sin, as you see here. She said, he will be a bird from paradise, of paradise, for he commit no sin, nor has reached the age when one can commit sin. So this person is just little, maybe infant. Aisha, Aisha, Muhammad said to her, Aisha, per adventure, it may, it may be otherwise. So everything happened to Muhammadan is written. It is fate. So going back to Muhammad die by poison, that means it's a fate. It was not a choice of the women. It was a plan of Allah to make this woman kill Muhammad. And if we compare that to the verse in the Quran, where it says, if Muhammad is a fabricator, if he is lying, if he is making false Quran, if he is claiming that this is coming from God and it's not, what we will do? We will cut his artery. Will Muhammad look like he is going to leave Islam soon? Let us call him. I'm reading his chat. Yes, Muhammad. Hello. Yes, so you decide to leave Islam or what? Hello? Hello? 
Yeah, did you decide to leave Islam? Because I see now you are saying to me, do you want me to say what you said to me in the chat or you don't want to say? In Skype? I watch your video every day, so many things. You show it. I can't. Like... Yeah, so, Muhammad, leave Islam then. Come on. I mean, you are. You know, uh, this is this is a religion for the foolish ones. You are, you know, you you, you see. I, I I'm asking you if you would like me to show what you said in the chat, but obviously you are you agree with me. You know, you are saying to me you are showing me a contradiction. I do not know what to do, but this is what I believe all my life, etc. So, you know, like so that's mean you, you in your heart. You know, I'm saying the truth. So while you are arguing with me and you are denying it and you're trying to defend, you know, when you're in your heart. You know that this is the truth. Because you cannot give up your iman so easy. You have to fight. What do you know if I give up? There's no, there's nothing there to give up. I mean, do you see the stupidity here? This guy is obviously mentally ill. But Allah will test our iman. My friend, what Allah? There's no Allah. Have you ever heard of our God? He will give a penis to somebody because he believes in him. He will give his penis so long. I mean, what kind of Allah is this Allah is? Even Allah of Thailand don't do that. Go to Thailand, they change you. You make you, they will make the female male and the male female. But this is not Allah. So what does God, what, what does God is promising me? What kind of God he promised me? Women would, uh, he did not even say the word women. He says boobs. Are they flying boobs? So when you say I cannot uh, deny and my so, faith yeah, and I'm, you know. I've heard this before I watch your video, like endless penis. I think you're just the insult, mock, make fun of us, but. I don't have, a, I don't know the reference for that. Yeah, I can I show you, I can show the reference. I, no, first of all, I never have a Muslim asking me for reference for anything and I did not show it. Don't you know that? I watch your video maybe a couple months. Okay. I don't see all the videos. But, um, yeah, but uh, have you ever seen me, a Muslim asking me or you asked me for a reference and I did not? And here we go, I will find you the reference. You know, so if I find you now with the reference, you will leave Islam for reference about what about, about the endless penis. You forgot what we are talking about. Well, you can show me the if you can prove that because uh, I watch your video, you say things like only Muhammad he promised uh, afterlife. Uh, for pleasure and things, but what? What I don't understand. I, what? What? Say again. Well, you tell the you tell the people that uh, the messenger was just promising like um, only sexual paradise and. Well, if there is any other paradise in your in your opinion? If there's any other paradise, or it's only it's about sex. I think there's other like things what? in that par paradise. Like what? That like, what? Like, like what? Like what? Like uh, what? No more banana. Pain, banana. No more banana. Yeah, I saw your video with the banana. Okay, saw... so what kind of God he yeah. promised you banana, man? What's wrong with you? I mean, this is God. He promised me a heaven, and there's a banana there. Is, is he talking to a kid like we are just a two years old kid? You say to him, if you do your homework, I will give you a banana. Well, banana is only one thing, right? Okay, the, give me the other things. People, <laughs> give me, because give I think me the people he talk to, <laughs> he have to, he have to tell them things that they're interested in, right? At that time, I don't think Bedouin had many banana or gold or silver. So that's why they mentioned, but that's not the only thing in the Jannah. But this is the only thing in the Jannah. There is only, you know, grape, uh, 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 ginger with the uh, uh, with wine, which is very funny, you know, ginger with wine. What the heck is that? River of wine, river of milk, and uh, uh, banana and uh, grape and boys, 80,000 boys for each one of you to serve you, supposedly, and they will never bleed. So, what uh, and a lot of women, and all those women, they are jailed in their rooms, correct? 
I never saw that at all. The eighty thousand boy. I saw. I swear that makeup thing. You. The lowest. The fucking, lowest reward. Fucking, the lowest fucking. reward, my friend. Okay. Uh, even if it is ten boys, isn't it the Quran says Gulmanu Mukhaladun? So Gulmanu Mukhaladun. Those boys are so sexy according to the Quran. And why they are sexy according to the Quran? They are so white because this God is a racist God. I mean, why they are so white? What's wrong with when, when, and all the and the women too, they are so white. And there's actually there's no black in the heaven of Allah. All the black ones they will go to hell according to Muhammad. And the Quran says that. And all the white, no, all, said only some white. black ants will go to hell. Why you say huh? all the black people will go to hell? Only black ants from the shoulder or something you said. It's not all the all the black. No, you see, this is what your God said that Allah, when He created Adam, He created them from the uh, when He created the human kind, He created them from the shoulder of Adam. The white ones, according to your prophet, He created them. Let me open the hadith. He created them from the shoulder, the white people, from the right shoulder of Adam. And then uh, and he hit him in his shoulder. And he, from that shoulder, the right one, uh, he created the, the white. And he said to the white one, you go to heaven and I don't care. And then he hit the black shoulder, the, the, the right left shoulder, sorry, of Adam. And let me show you the hadith, here we go. And then he created the black people and they are like black ant, like circle. And then he said to them, you go to hell and I don't care. Do you agree with this? Do you agree really that people are better if they are white? Do you agree with that? Or or we should agree no. that uh, uh, we are, are a human ants. being. You know, I have neighbors, they are black people. They are wonderful. They, they love me actually, you know. If I don't... Uh, uh, if they don't see me, you know, the lady there, she get worried about me. She want to check to see what, how I'm doing, you know. If I if I go in the travel, uh, I did not mention that I'm leaving. She called the police to see what happened. I don't see him. Black people, they are wonderful people. So what's, why the black people will go to hell? How you answer that? And this is Sahih Hadith. And this is, and this is at Tunwudi. This is at Tunwudi. Hadith number 38. These are black ant and white ant. It's they are people, my friend. Uh, ants are created from Adam. Yeah, it says ant. It's do you know? Do you know ant. how to read? Uh, then your screen not showing it. Hmm. But I saw it before you showed it. Okay, I see. Okay, the offspring, offspring of Adam. Uh, they are the ants. According to you so now, the, the offspring of. It. I mean, do you see how Muslims guys they try to duct tape the stupidity of Muhammad? Suddenly, the offspring of Adam, they are ants. No, you have to with Eve to do to have offspring. No, my no. friend, now I'm convinced with you that Adam, he was our grandfather, he was an ant. You know, you are an atheist, obviously, maybe, and you believe that you used to be an ant and then we became a human. Read with me carefully, he says that. Allah Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Allah, he created Adam when he created him and he struck him in his right shoulder and there emitted from it white offspring, white offspring, as, as if they were white and he, he's not saying they are ants, he's saying as, he's saying how white they are. They are white as if they were white ants. So in the in desert, Arabic it says that in uh, Arabic. Huh? This is not. Is this just not uh, English? Something get changed in English, or something? Look, my friend. So what do we want to do now? Arabic. I mean, I don't know what to do. The Muslims, uh, we show them English. They say they ask for Arabic. We show them Arabic. They say I don't speak Arabic. So what we would do? Do you speak Arabic? No, I'm asking if okay, this my is, friend, uh, I'm asking you, do you know Arabic? So if you do not know Arabic, then what you will do now? We'll put to Google Translate in the Arabic to make but, sure. But, it's this safe. Is, but this is your Muslim website. Which website is that one? Al Ilm. Al Ilm. Let us let us see actually if I can find for you from different website. Hold on. So you're trying to tell me that uh, that is um, uh, 
What that sign? Uh, what that sign? White, white people, white people come to heaven. I'm not trying to tell you. This is what your prophet says. I don't, I don't agree with that. I agree uh, what I believe that you are white or black, you are Asian or it doesn't matter who you are, who cares what your color is. I mean, since when, because of your color, you go to heaven, that's stupid. You know? Since when that the, the white people are, they are the best and the black people, they are not. And all Asian people, I mean, people are people. There's good people everywhere. There's bad people everywhere. As an example, when you, my mom, she gave birth to me. I asked her uh, later, you know, not right away. Because I want to celebrate my birthday, I said, Mom, when I was born, she said, my son, I do not know when you were born, or what I know when your birthday was, or what I know, it was a bad day. So, see, I am not from Africa, here we go, and my mom, she said it was a bad day. So, being a white or a black have nothing to do with being bad or good. I mean, use your brain. Being, being Indonesian or being European doesn't make that different. There's bad in Indonesia, there's bad in Europe, there's good in Indonesia, there's good in Europe. Your prophet is a very filthy racist. And he's mentally ill. Well, Bilal was black. The... What Bilal? Bilal, he, Muhammad, he died and Bilal is still is a slave. After Muhammad, he died, Bilal, he went to Abu Bakr, he says, free me for the sake of Allah, if you bought me for the sake of Allah. Why your prophet he own slaves? Why he own black people? You Muslim, you go and you lie to people who say the Islam is came to free slavery and your prophet he die owning slaves? Why he don't free everybody, at least before he die? Actually, Sheikh Asam said that uh, they enslave because that is the time, how they do it. It doesn't matter what they yet. do it, my friend. You are saying those Muslims, they will follow you. Now you are a government. You are not just a messenger who is speaking in the street and nobody listen. You are a government, you are the king. So you can say from now on, there's no more slavery. But the guy himself, he owned many slaves in his house. Shouldn't he be the best example? And not only he owned them, he sleep with them. He raped them. And not only that, the Quran, make it clear that you can use your slaves for prostitution. First, not your girls, your, your maid, your slaves, to do prostitution if they choose in chastity. But if you force them, it's all okay. Allah is all merciful. Correct? Well, yesterday, I think you twisted that because they, Allah is saying he will forgive the women if they get forced. Okay, it doesn't do matter. That. But Allah, but Allah, look what Allah he did. You see, I didn't know. I'm a friend, Muhammad, I'm trying to be nice to you. But usually I can't be nice to people. You know, like, I'm, this is how I am, what I can do. I can't be nice to you too much. Listen carefully. If the verse saying, Force them not if they choose a chastity. That's mean if they choose to do business, be prostitute, it's okay. So this is a slave girl, a Muslim guy, he own her. He is forcing her to do prostitution. Allah said to them, force them not. But if you force them, Allah is all merciful. So what about the man? Do you punish him? No. So now there's two options. Either you make her agree to do to work as a whore for you, and you are the pimp. And this is me and Muslims, they got a license to be pimp. And actually the video is there in Soko film, you can go watch it. It says, you know, it looked like Allah, he made us to give us a license to be a pimp. Here it says, if they agree, you can be a pimp and it's fine. If they don't agree, it's okay, still fine. Allah is all merciful, there's no punishment. Did, did Muhammad say never allow prostitution? No. He says, for them not, if they don't desire chastity. Which means if they desire not chastity, it's okay. What kind of religion this religion is? But we don't allow prostitution now. Hey, Muhammad, I don't know. You see, I, I, I'm going to hang up on you. I call you because you because of what you said to me. And I felt like, you know, your heart is moving to the truth. But obviously, yeah, you know, what, what I can do with you? I, I'm going to give up. What do you mean that prostitution is forbidden? Do you okay? Can you show me one verse in the Quran opposing this verse? No, the Quran is so clear. Force not your maid into prostitution if they desire chastity. Okay, what if they don't desire? That means it's okay. And even if you force them, it's okay still. Allah is all forgiven. 
forgiving the women, forgive the men. Will Muslim believe Allah forgive everything? <laughs> right? Just go and kiss the black stone. <laughs> you know, in the time of Muhammad, the whole town became a pimp town. They go, they capture the girls of the of the Arab or the Jews or the Christians, and they force them into prostitution. This is Islam, my friend. It's a whole town. And those girls, obviously, they are victims. We cannot call them really a prostitute. The real prostitute is your prophet. He is the one. He is the pimp. He is the real pimp. He is forcing those girls. And now because the women, they start complaining. It's not because he's a good guy. The Muslim women, they start complaining about their husbands. Nobody come home. A lot of beautiful prostitute all over. Even you Muslim, you have something it's called exchange of a vagina. What kind of religion is religion? Exchange of a vagina. How you do that? Istiaratul furuj. If I go right now and type in Google, istiaratul furuj. Let us do it. Here we go. How you can borrow a woman? Hmm? <laughs> How in the world a person he can borrow a woman from an uh, from a husband or other man? So let us see. Uh, <laughs> read with me. I will put it for you. You know Ibn, uh, Ibn Hazm, big shake, big potato. This is his book, Ibn Hazm, very number 11, page number 257. It says, uh, a woman, she can make her slave lawful to her husband. This is number one. Uh, and then he continues, says, uh, they are discussing many issues supposedly here in this topic. Uh, let us see. This is what the Muslim they, they, agree, they agree with. It says here, either uhillat imra'atu rajul, aw ibnatahu, aw ukhtahu, aw ahallat laha, uh, uh, he can if her uh, okay so so here if Abu uh, Abbas he said if a woman she agree that her husband this is not actually what I want to show you but this is a different one but it's okay if a woman she agree that her husband can sleep around with a slave or anyone, it's lawful for him. There's no nothing bad in that. Translation. Even if it is, uh, if the man wife refer or it or his daughter or his sister, you know, if they if, if they uh, uh, told the man you can go sleep with your maid maid servant or your slave. It's lawful, there's nothing wrong with that. Without marriage, she's a maid. Let me show you other thing. This is not really what I was looking for. Uh, let us see this one. Actually, here I found it even a picture from the book. And here, actually, my reading was was wrong. Here, the, 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 they are like they are doing some uh, uh, with the tashkir. You can read it better. So look what happened now. Here it says, if a woman, a wife of a man, 
or his daughter or his sister. They invite the man to have sex with a slave woman so he can if her. Or he can put his penis between her legs. Do you see what it says here? Let me, let me, let me. Uh... <laughs> what a religion. What a religion. But فليجعل به بين وركيها. He can put his penis between her legs or her, you know, I don't know how to translate the word in English. Uh, Ibn Jurayj, he said, according to Ibn Tawus from his father, he said there's nothing wrong with that. Problem number 2234. The one who allow his own slave to someone else. Not only they sleep with their own slaves. Now this guy is borrowing a slave from other guy to do what to if her. This is religion. And here it says, and this is is halal. You see the word halal. هذا هو halal. This is a religion. <laughs> you can borrow the, the the servant of your neighbor to f her. Isn't it, this is a rape? And actually, chapter twenty four, verse number thirty three, is saying clearly that Muslim they can rape women because not only you are sleeping with her, now you are forcing her into sex slavery to work as a whore against her will. And if the verse in the Quran says, force not, and there's no penalty, that's mean, this is this is a, a talk in the wind, force not, but still you can force them because there's, there's no penalty. When you do something against law, well, the law should bring a penalty. Otherwise, if, if the law says don't cross the red, red light, and then nobody give you a fine or nobody take you to jail if you cross the red light, everybody cross the red light. Don't cross the red light. There is a penalty. No, there is no penalty. And this but is the. This verse look like it's talk about uh, freeing slaves if they requested it. Where, so. where free slave, my friend? It says the opposite. It's about free, freeing slave. What are you talking about? This is about it's using women, my friend. Okay, okay, hold on. Do you want me to show you? Don't, don't, do you want me to show you the interpretation? Do you want me to show you the interpretation of the verse? Here we go. And you are the one who mentioned you like Ibn Abbas before, don't you? I was going to ask you for Ibn Abbas. Actually. Okay. I don't know okay. Chapter you know 24, verse number 33, Ibn Abbas. Here we go. How did you know he's going to ask for Ibn Abbas? Uh, Jibreel told me. Jibreel, you know, he whispered in my, uh, he gave me the ring of a bill like your prophet. And this is another sign that your prophet is mentally ill. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody receive word of God as a sound of a bell? This guy is obviously mentally ill. So here it says, this is Ibn Abbas, uh, is speaking about here, those who they are unable to marry, uh, till, to keep chastity till Allah gave them, etc. So what they do? They cannot get, those are men, they cannot get married. So what they do? Hmm? They go and they have sex. Uh, with the slaves. And then he says, uh, Abu Abdul Uzza, who refused to agree to give one of his slaves a chance to buy out his freedom, as such as, between two bracket, of your slave as seek uh, a writing. You know, like the, the slaves, he got some money from somewhere. He says, I want to give them money, you know, give me my freedom back to buy out their freedom, okay? And then he says, if you know they are righteous and keep their promise, and uh, upon, uh, um, I don't know, translation, yeah, so if, if they keep their promise, you can make an agreement with their 
uh, promise to uh, to pay off for their uh, for their but until now i don't see where is the one about about uh, the sex slave let us see here okay and then he says then the following was revealed about abdullah ibn ubay and his host because they used to force their female slaves to commit adultery in order to earn money from them and have more slaves as a result of the children they bore as a consequence. And for Allah, he forbid them from doing this and made such an act forbidden by saying, force not your slave girls, you know, to do prostitution, all right? And then, uh, in order to earn money from working in prostitution and also from the children who they give birth to them. And if they want, if they want to remain chaste, Okay, so if they want to remain, not to do that business, force them not. But what if they don't want to remain? What if the women she like it and the and the owner he like it? It's okay. And then if one he forced these slave girls to commit adultery, then into them, you know, uh, if they repent, Allah is all forgiven and merciful. Well, where is the penalty? What is the penalty for the one who's doing that? And why the Quran saying if they choose a chastity? So if the women she choose not to do chastity, it's okay. And why here it says if a woman, if a man a man he can borrow, what well, I mean, what is the difference between this and this? A man he can borrow from his neighbor. This is the book of Al Hudud. Ibn Hazm al Andalusi, hadith number, as I see the page is not clear, the number 2231, I think, as you see in the screen. Oh, sorry, here it's this hadith number, yeah, not, not page number. Uh, page number 167, it says that the, the, the issue of the one who allow the, the vagina, I'm trying to be polite not to say in the P word, allow the vagina of his slave to someone else. Read it, it's in a green. Allowing what? Allowing the vagina to someone else. And it says what? It is halal. This is this is rape. Not only the owner is sleeping with her, he is, you know, somebody, the neighbor can borrow her. And the Muslim himself, he can borrow the exchange. That's why it's called istarat al-furuj. Borrowing a vagina. The Bedouin were doing that. And by the way, in case good. you do not know, a Muslim he can have sex with his own daughter too. If she is a daughter from adultery, the Quran says, You can go, and I will give you time to check it out, because you might say Christian Prince is lying to you. You go and check, and I will show you the interpretation from Al Qurtubi. It says it clearly that it is lawful for a Muslim, according to the most accurate opinion of all the scholars, to have sex with your daughter from adultery. Remember, you can have sex only with your daughter from adultery. But if your daughter is not from adultery, you cannot, the Quran forbid you. So Quran, make it lawful, very ugly, ugly lawful. You know, you see the Muslim, they say to you, there's, there's a guy, his name is Lut in the Old Testament, his daughters, because there's no men around, and they were fearing that there's nobody will be there. They slept with their father, they made him drunk. And the Muslim, they make a drama about it, but the Bible does not approve it. The Bible is reporting what those women did. The hypocrisy of the Muhammad is beyond imagination. But here we have God, and we have religion, saying that if you have a daughter, this is Tafsir al-Qurtubi, chapter 25, verse number 54. It says, what does that mean? Maybe you don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Your scholars know. And they say clearly that it is lawful for a man to have sex with the woman or her daughter as long as she is his daughter from adultery for she doesn't go under the command of Allah that is forbidden for you to have sex with your mothers and your daughter. 
or she is his daughter from adultery. And this is according to the most accurate opinion of Islam. So you can go right now. You do not need my link. Search chapter 25, verse number 54. The official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. al Khurtubi. And take it to any Muslim who speak Arabic. And let us see if I'm lying. It's not forbidden to have sex with your own daughter. Why? Because she is not your daughter in Islam. Islam does not consider a daughter from out of marriage, even if it's a muta marriage. Muta marriage is legal in Islam, so it's marriage, you call it marriage, but, it's, but this is prostitution too, another form of prostitution. So Allah, he said, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lineage is from mixing water between male and female, according to the Sharia. But because this daughter, according to the most accurate opinion, and to our scholars, and the most correct of the two opinions of all the Muslims in the religion, as long as there is no, no lineage, according to Sharia, which means not from a legal marriage, there's no, as long as there's no legal marriage, it is not forbidden to do fornication with the daughter and the mother of the daughter. This is religion, Muhammad. Be honest with me. This is a religion you want to follow? Well, I don't know anyone who do those things. It doesn't matter. You, maybe you will not do it because you are a good person. But doesn't mean Islam is a good religion. You don't do it because you are a good person. But, uh, you know, this is what the Quran is saying. This is what your prophet is saying. This is what your scar is saying. So, uh, uh, if I'm a believer, well, I will go to follow what I believe in. Don't you believe in it? Why you don't want to follow? Why you don't want to follow? And let me post the link for everybody in the chat. You can use Google Translation of your own. You do not need to speak Arabic. And now we understand who is the one who killed Muhammad for his crimes. This man, he deceived millions of people. Billions. He killed hundreds of thousands, millions. He raped, he tortured, he's filthy. So I believe, you mustn't believe that the one who caused the death of Muhammad is Allah. I believe that the one who caused his death is my Lord. He wanted to expose him. So when Muhammad he says, I'm dying because of the poison, Muhammad he never imagined that what he said before is going to happen. Before that point, Muhammad he said in the Quran that if I am lying, if I am fabricating Quran, Allah will cut is my artery. When Muhammad he made that verse, In chapter 69, verse number 46, he never imagined that this is exactly what will happen to him. He made a promise. Allah said to him, if you are Muhammad lying, if you are fabricating Quran, I will cut your artery. Muhammad, he made it, he threw it there. He never thought this is how we will die. But look what happened. The Lord, he made the exact promise happen. This is our Lord, not your Lord. The false prophet Muhammad, he threw the sentence in the wind. He never thought he would die in such a way. And then he died exactly as he promised. If he is lying and fabricating Quran and fabricating word of God, this is exactly how he will die. So if I am lying, O oh, your Muhammad, if you are lying, if you are fabricating word of God, we should certainly size him from his right hand, and we should certainly then cut off his artery of his heart. We go to the hadith. Muhammad described how he is dying. Describe what his pain is. Describe what he feel, and who can feel more than the one who feel it. I can't describe for you how it hurt me if I have pain in my tooth. I can't describe that. But I can tell you, it's coming from my tooth. Who can feel more than Muhammad? Muhammad died exactly 
as he promised, if he is lying. So the title of my video, why Allah ordered to kill Muhammad, I don't believe Allah exists. Allah cannot kill anyone. Allah is a false name, false God, false deity. Allah is a pagan God of the moon God. al Lah. Al is a word meaning God. La is the name of the God, which is the moon God. That God does not exist. He cannot kill anyone. But the one who caused the death of Muhammad to be in such a way, I believe it's our Lord. He decided to expose the faith in Muhammad for his crimes. So what do you think, Muhammad? Aren't you going to leave Islam, my friend? I don't know, but no, you know. I Come know on. That, Come on, I Muhammad. That, uh, I have one question about the poison because how did um, if it was poison kill him? Uh, how come Bishr died same time, but uh, Muhammad he lived longer, like three years? Because my, my friend, imam, my friend, see, either way, either way, either way, Muhammad is a liar because no. because Muhammad, when a person he come to him is sick, without knowing what is inside his stomach, Muhammad supposedly he claimed that Allah told him to drink honey. So how come Muhammad he can tell you what is your sickness, and now Muhammad he cannot prescribe what he is what, what he have? Why the Muslim they defend that the Prophet when he told the guy go and drink honey, and the the, the brother of the guy was dying from sickness. Why the defend? They said Allah told him, and he was right, and later he was a cure. And now Muhammad himself, he is the one who is dying from the sickness. He is the one who feared it. And you are telling me, maybe he was wrong. Is it you, Muslim, you say, Everything Muhammad says from Allah. Which is very funny to say the word inspiration, because if it's inspiration, so what is the duty of Jibreel? If Muhammad received the Quran, as inspiration, that means there's no need for Jibreel. If I receive verses by the voice of a man or voice of an angel who come to me as a man, then I did not receive inspiration. Inspiration is God speaking to me in my mind. But this is was receiving Quran by voice from a person who appeared to him in the shape of a man, perfect man. So even the word he is wrong, but the word topic is this person who he claimed that everything he say is from Allah and there's nothing wrong. So how he say he is dying because of poison if he is not dying because of poison? Either way, Muhammad was not telling the truth then. What do you think, Adam? Sorry, uh, Muhammad. I think you like the version, yeah. don't you? I mean, you like to have a long penis, don't you? Come on, say, tell me the truth. It's okay, you know? I, like we are, you know, we are men. There's no women here. Nobody's listening. You like to have an endless penis, right? And there's a lot of women, and they are wearing 70 dress, and you will have 70 year orgasm. 70 years orgasm, Muhammad? So I call you now. You say, I'm busy. I'll call you next year. You still have orgasm. I'll call you 10 years after. Muhammad is still having orgasm. I call you 20 years after. Muhammad is still busy, holding his private part, having orgasm. I call him after 60 years. Muhammad even is not done. Man, I mean, I will have a gray hair. Uh, my beard will be 200 meter. I will be walking in a stick and still Muhammad having orgasm. 70 years and Muhammad is not done. The second Muhammad is done, he start the second one. If the orgasm is 70 years, how long the sex is? The orgasm alone is 70 years, Muhammad. What you will be doing, uh, what kind of heaven this heaven is? The orgasm alone is 70 years. The sex is how long? This is madness, this is, this is sex addiction, this is drugs, this is stupidity. Are we, are we animals living for sex? What the heck is that? Watch TV, man. Take a break. Make some tea. Go in the yard. Like the, look at the fountain. You are in heaven now, huh? Open Netflix or Amazon or YouTube. Seventy years orgasm. Don't you want to eat?
So, Muhammad, do you want to leave Islam or not? What do you think? Well, some of those things you show me, I, they don't make sense. Exactly. Don't make sense. I agree with you. This is all stupid. So, we agree that and Islam does not make sense. I, I don't uh, have answer for those things. And I cannot. I try to... Uh, I try to email some of those Dawa people. They they don't respond. But uh... yeah, you told me that you 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 texted this guy Hamza. He refused to answer. Huh? The coward. Yeah, I sent him email, but I mm -hmm. don't know if he's really. Yeah, he will never dare to answer you. He will never dare. But um, I, uh, some of those things, like I don't care about. Endless penis. I don't care about that. I care. I like to have an endless penis. I will tell you why. I can sign now a contract with many countries to run like now in Europe they have a problem with, with the with the natural gas. I can use the penis to run gas from all the way from USA from Texas all the way to Europe to Germany as an example. Do you know how much money I will make from that penis? I will not use it for sex. Just put it in the ocean, man. Connect the faucet here in USA to the, the to the uh, gas and let it run it all the way to Germany. And uh, the German, they take like make a faucet on it, and then we kick you go with it because it's endless. You know, I can go to Russia, I can go. I mean, I will send uh, gas to Ukraine. I will send gas to everybody, you know, like who cares? I mean, the penis is going anyway, you know, it's endless. So like connect from here, connect from there. We can use it as a cable, the internet cable too, you know, of a galaxies. Like people, they go to the sky, they are using slow internet now because it's in the space is not so fast. This penis will go and like go all the way to Germany, and then you know you make a U-turn. You go all the way. You, you stop in the moon, and then you go and you make a U-turn. You go to uh, Mars, and from Mars, I don't like Mars anyway. It's cold there. I don't want the penis to get cold. So you know, like you know, you can go around, and you you can you can put a GoPro camera and open a live camera, live on air, and you can imagine how many millions they want to see how this endless penis keep going. You go through the galaxies. We hit the star, we destroy the star, because this is endless, you know, the star explodes. You go through the sun, you burn the sun. The, the sun cannot burn your penis. Come on, this is from Allah. You burn, the sun will go like, you know, like burn in a second. It's like firework. Your, your penis will be like, wow, you know, and imagine what happened to women, man, when they see such a penis. They will go not. Trust me. Imagine how many want to take selfie with it, like in TikTok, you know? Like even TikTok will get exploded because it's so big. So uh, what do you mean you don't care? If you don't care, why must them are promised such a thing? But you said to me like you like it, that's why you are Muslim. I'm not. I'm I just being Muslim. sarcastic, aren't you? Aren't you? I, you know, Muhammad, I'm, I'm just laughing, man. What like it? I mean, this is stupid. What I would do with in this penis? The woman is next to me, and my penis is in, in seven galaxy. So what I would do now? I will make it you make your turn and come back to her. And if you put her, excuse my language, if you put the penis in, where is going to go? Come out from the other side and continue because it's endless. What is what the heck is this? No, I heard um, another person say that's a little bit wrong translation, but that it's um, endlessly ah, like, wrong like, translation. Like you will never go soft. Uh, no, that this is this is different hadith, my friend. The, the never go soft is different thing. This is different hadith. This is not the same one. We are mixing things up. Let me show you the other one. Um, this is the one you are talking about. You know. But anyway, there is no way I can do it. Well, I can send you a dish of shish kebab. What's wrong with you? Come on. No. Uh, let us see. So, what do you think, Muhammad? Do you believe Islam or not? Nobody else gonna accept if I do it. They cannot. I cannot tell anybody else my. You, uh, family, I oh, you, live, you live in the Middle East now? 
I don't want to say. No, okay. I don't. Okay, okay don't say. But if you don't even believe, it's okay. I mean, what they can do to you? Eh, nothing. You know, be free, my friend. And even if you don't want to tell anyone, don't. And this is your business. You know, in your heart, you can do whatever you want. But obviously, you are out of Islam already, aren't you? I believe in God. You believe in God, but you don't believe in Islam no more, correct? Well, I don't believe the things you showed me as today. Yeah, but you don't believe in Muhammad anyway. That's it. That's what Muhammad said. If you don't believe what Muhammad said, that's mean you don't believe in Muhammad. But what if it's test? What test? I mean, what kind of a stupid test is this test as? So this God, he says stupid things to make you know that he's a stupid God in order to test you. He proved to you that he is a stupid prophet and he is, and is the prophet have a stupid God in order to fool you. I mean, what kind of test that test is? It's like you are saying to me, I go to take an exam and then I answer all the questions wrong. And this is why, because I want to taste the teacher. But I'm the one who gets the zero. I mean, what the, what the heck? Come on, Muhammad, you are smarter than this. Are you out of his name, my friend? Even if I am, I have to pretend with my people because I could not tell them. Okay, don't tell them. Okay, you know what? I'm going to hang up on you. Tell me in the chat and I will not tell anyone whatever you say. Is that fair? If you are afraid. I will not show anyone what you say to me in the chat. I promise. Unless you tell me it's okay to show. Well, if someone leaves Islam, uh, what they're supposed to do? Well, just leave Islam and then we will see what you can do next. You know, we can explain to you the Bible. You can, it's up to you. You want to become a Christian? You know, we welcome you. Uh, you don't want to become a Christian? This is up to you too. There's no. Nobody can force you for anything, you know, believing in God is a, your choice. So I can, you know, explain to you about the Bible. I can explain to you what Jesus, why we believe in Jesus. And, you know, the, the Messiah is amazing. I mean, look, his name is the Messiah, the Savior. And even in the, in, in the cult of Islam, who is the one who will save the whole world? Who is the one who will complete the mission to save the, the, the mankind? It's Jesus, even in the stupid cult of Islam. So isn't it obvious that the one who will save us all is Jesus? Everybody is waiting for Jesus. Everybody. The Jews, the Christians, the Muslims. So who is the one who will save us? Messiah, my friend. There's no doubt. Yeah, you showed me too many things. So I don't think I believe this stuff anymore. Well, I'm happy for you, my friend. I'm happy that you decide to leave Islam. And I would love to invite you to accept Jesus as your savior. What do you think? What, what do you what do you feel when I say to you the Messiah? What do you think? What do you think in your heart? What do you feel? Well, I don't know much about uh, gospel. And, uh, well, I will give you some time then. You can go and read. You know, go and read the gospel of John. Start from there. Study it page by page. And I will be happy to take your questions from time to time when you have time. And I hope soon you will accept the Messiah as your Lord, as your Savior. And me, myself now, I apologize from you because I forced you in the other day to call yourself donkey. Because now you prove to me you are not a donkey no more. You are not. Well, if I believe, uh, if I just become a, a Christian without understanding the book, then I'm still a donkey. No, we don't want to. We don't want you to become a Christian without understanding. But anyway, but you can become a Christian, you know, by understanding what, why you, you like, why you, be, why you want, why you believe Jesus is your savior. It's not just saying shahada. We don't believe in such a thing. You know, this is hypocrisy. You know, shahada, like we say a sentence and nobody knows what he's saying. We don't. We don't have such a thing. You have to accept the Messiah in your heart. You have to believe, not to say in a sentence, that he is your savior. He is the one 
He is the only way for salvation, and you love him from your heart, and he loves you too. If you believe that he is your savior, and there's no other savior, there's no priest, there's no bishop, there's no pope, there's no Christian prince, there's nobody. Only one name. His name is the Messiah. If you believe in that, then my friend, you are saved. Even if you do not know much about the Bible, even who said that you don't, you know, you don't have to be a scholar in anything. Knowing the book is the, the, the Jesus, he said, loving to your neighbor what you love to yourself. Wish to everybody what you wish to yourself, which means kill evil inside you. And believe in him, love your Lord, you know, the one who created you from all your heart. So if you love the Messiah from all your heart and you wish to others, what you wish yourself, you just learn the gospel. That's it. This is the book. Now, for sure, you can study more and learn more, but this is the whole purpose of the Messiah, to bring us back to our humanity so we can be loving people, not hateful. Muslim, they think I hate them. I never hate a Muslim. I will never hate them. I'm so angry when I see a person being foolish, going to hell and trying to help him. Yesterday, I... I... I tried to um, discuss with you, but I felt like all you wanted to do was like, uh, like you want it, like you want to come on, on Skype and find the donkey and 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 laugh at us. No, I'm but, not. I'm not, my friend. I'm. You see, it's not you who said that. It's your prophet. I'm not laughing at you. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I do what I do, uh, because I find it is the most effective way to make a person wake up from his stupidity. All of us, we do stupid things. Like, you know, sometimes uh, your son, he wanna take drugs. He wanna take drugs, he thinks drugs is, is, is good. So what do you do? Do you hate your, your son? If you hate your son, you say to him, okay, let me give you a hug, don't worry, do drugs. But if you love your son, you scream at his face, you laugh at him, but, the, but not the purpose is to love. The purpose is to show him how stupid he is by doing that. So you try to save the person by any way, by any mean. It's like when somebody, you know, the, the, the Arab in the old days and even other, other nations, when somebody have an illness and uh, he, he have an infection in a wound and they are like, they cannot fight it. So what they do? They put a piece of steel on the fire and then they touch the wound with it. But they don't, they are not trying to hurt you. They're trying to save you. So if yesterday I was putting the steel over your wound, my friend, I wasn't trying to hurt you. I'm trying to save you. And it worked. Yesterday you were against me. An hour ago you were against me. Now you decide to leave Islam. It worked. I think... Um... Since I started to watch your video, I had some. I went. I researched those. Um, some of your video, I went to research it, and I see some of it. Uh, it's a uh, sahih. So I had uh, some question, um, and then I called you because, you know, in, uh, another caller he said uh, to you, you know, Jesus, he don't know the hour. Hmm. And uh, actually, my other Muslim friend, we used to make fun of uh, of the Christian because they we know about this. Um, we know that uh, Jesus told his his uh, follower, "I don't know that only only is the Father." Mm -hmm. So we, you know, but um, um, I don't know. I apologize. I, insult your religion no no you are it's okay for me i know how muslims do do things usually muslims they do mockery and this is why myself i use the same language they do so they can wake up from their madness uh, this what this what you grow up with this what they told you this what you learned it's okay but you know thanks we we, we are we are thankful for the lord but i still don't understand how uh, oh, wow. how um, how son don't understand very, very, father, no very simple no very simple you see when the messiah what the messiah he says he says my father right so if i yeah. say to you who uh, are you going to uh, come let us say i want to invite you tomorrow to come uh, i'm getting married you say to me 
Well, my father will answer you. Why? Because he is the one who is in charge of this, of the family, right? So in the case of Jesus, Jesus, he said it clearly. Everything I have is from my father. Jesus said it clearly. Let your will be done. Even when he went to the cross, let your will be done. The will of who? The will of the Father. So the Son is always in total agreement with the Father. So the decision of the decision of the Father, and this is what the Father do. The day of judgment, the announcement of that day, is in the hand of the Father. What is in the hand of the Son is to be the judge over the flesh. That will be a problem if we Christians believe that our God is one person, but we don't. We believe that God is the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Son, you have a duty to do. God the Father, you have different duty to do. So let your will done. That means this is the will of the Father. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten Son. Who is the one who sent the Son? Muhammad? The Father. The Father. Okay. So isn't it obvious that the one who is giving the high decision is the Father? Right? It's obvious. Yeah, it's so the son is doing what? Is doing what? Is doing what the father asked him to do. So why the father will not be the one who decide and the one who decide to announce the day of judgment? So is Jesus? He know he just won't announce it. He's it's not about. It's not about. It's not about knowing. It's about this is not his duty. You know the people they're trying to find out when the judgment day is. But it's not for the Son of Man. The Son of Man who? Jesus in the flesh. Because now if you ask me and I tell you, either I will tell you a lie or I will tell you the truth. So if I say, if I know the date exactly and I say I do not know, that means I'm lying. If I say to you the date, that's against the will of my Father. Because this is, is not for anyone to know. You know, imagine if all of us, we knew when the judgment day is going to be. No one of us will care. Because simply, we will wait until the night of the judgment day and start praying to God, asking for forgiveness. So, so it's, not, it's not for Jesus any man, my friend. Jesus, he didn't tell anybody. Like, I don't understand. It's very, he... it's very simple. Let me repeat again. This is in the hand of the Father. The Father is the one who makes decision. The Messiah and his mission in the, to, the, to the earth. There is no decision about the the the, uh, 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 the the judgment day yet. And Jesus, he told him what the Father told him. The Father told me. The Father said to me. So the Father did not tell. The Father did not tell Jesus about when. And uh, I believe actually that the Father did not even make decision about it, because we in Christianity we don't believe in the pre preset date for anything. As an example, when when uh, uh, we have a stories in the Bible about people, they uh, they wanna uh, you know, know what you're say. Sodom and if Gomorrah, ten, you know. So he said to them, "Yeah, if there is a few righteous, will you you destroy the city." He said, "No." So what is going to decide to destroy the city is about how many righteous. So if we are the people decide not to be righteous no more, the faster we are not righteous, the faster judgment they come. That's why it's called a free will. So if God he decide in a pre-set time, pre-dating time, this is not about knowledge only, this is about freedom of belief and act. So God, he will let you do as you wish. Go live. You want to live evil, live evil. You want to live good, live good. You want to be bad, be bad. This is your business. But as soon as no righteous is left, that means that's it. The whole food is damaged. You know, like you, you put your food in the refrigerator to what? To preserve it. Until this food is damaged, that's it. The refrigerator can fix it. So time is to throw them in the garbage. So when the time to throw everybody in the garbage, which is hellfire, then the day of judgment will happen. I heard um, in the Christianity um, is also close to the hour because um, because uh, only thing left to be made legal is the pedophilia um, before that time. 
And my uh, friend Muhammad, only... he made with Ophelia 1400 years ago, legal. Here's the pedophile. No, this is not the reason for the hour to come because pedophilia is one of many things are done by mankind, but it's about how many righteous people still, even if they make it legal. Because it's still not everybody is doing it, you know. So when we reach the point that everybody is evil, then this is the day of judgment will happen, and that nobody know, knows why because nobody knows the heart of every man in this earth. Correct? I can say maybe okay. I live in this community. Everybody here is evil. But what about a different city? What about a different country? So God, the same as He did not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because there is a few righteous left. God will not destroy this earth until there is no hope no more. And then the, the Messiah will come. And then the Messiah will elect his people. He will take them away to a different place. And then those who they are, you know, the one who reject Jesus, they will be taken to hellfire and they will be suffering for eternity. This one, my friend Muhammad, I'm saying to you. Why huh? only one problem I have with the religions, even Islam um, yeah. and Christianity, is um, because I see so many, you know, um, there are many, 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 many gay, gay people, and I don't think they're bad. So why do they have to go to the hellfire just because they were born? My friend, my friend, like let, me, let, me, let me explain, let me explain it to you in, in a very simple way. If you want to go, if you want to come to my house, my house, nobody can enter my house, and this is for real. Nobody can enter my house wearing his shoes. This is my house, correct? Do you agree with me, Muhammad? I have the right to say, who want to enter my house, correct? So, if you want to yes. come to my house, please take off your shoes. Why I force people to take off their shoes? Because you step in poo poo, you step in spitting, you stop. You know, I don't allow that. This is my house. Now, God, you have a house. And this God, he says, I have rules. Those things for me are not allowed. They are against my, 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 uh, 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 my teaching. As simple as that. But you want to do them, it's your business. You know, you cannot say this person is good and this person is bad. Well, he's doing bad, so how he can be a good person? So if I am a thief and then I make donation, is that, is that I'm a good thief? Is that what it means? If I am a good person and I do fornication, well, I am a good person, I do fornication. So what is fornication? Is it good? How we, how we can scale the word good? So God, he told us what is good and what is bad. It's not up to you. It's not up to me. You don't have to accept, you know, like you want to be a thief. You want to be a gay. You want to be uh, with a file. You want to be whatever you want. This is your business. But you want to enter the house of the Lord? You have to take your shoes off, which means you have to go by the requirement. And the requirement is do this, do that. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, the Messiah said, but the one who do his will. So you don't have to listen to the Messiah. Don't listen. Go, be drunk. Go, be a pedophile. Who? This is your business. Hmm? But he told you already that if you do those things, and you don't want to follow me. You don't belong to me. Go to the one you belong to. Jesus made it clear that Satan is the father of all lies. People lie to themselves, making themselves believe that they are doing nothing wrong. But in the eye of who? You are, you are good in the eye of who? Yourself? You justify always the bad things you do. When a man, he rape a woman, he claim what? You know, she is wearing short a skirt, but that will not change anything. It's your evil. You force yourself on her. When a man, he, you know, he rob a person in the street. Oh, he have a expensive watch and I don't have anything. You justify it. Human being always justify his bad. No criminal, usually, <laughs> He agreed that he is doing a crime. No one doing wrong. He agrees doing wrong. They always justify it. 
Even we Christians, you know, when we do things, we say, well, we are weak. Yes, we are weak. But shouldn't we fight our sin? Yes, true, we are weak. We get tempted. So being a Christian doesn't mean you are, you are an angel and you are perfect and you don't do wrong. No. But being a Christian means that you fight your sin as much as you can. You don't make sin your lifestyle and you don't enjoy your sin. When you make sin, you feel guilty and you repent and you, you do your best to fight it and not to do it again. But if a person, he decides to say, well, I don't see anything bad in that. This is your mind. This is your belief. The belief is, is what is in the Bible. It's not up to you. So there's a requirement. If you want to go to the heaven of Christ, you have to agree with the Christ. What do you think, Muhammad? Do you agree with the Christ? Or do you agree with the word? In this world, everything is upside down. And you know that. In this world, we have a president, he says Islam is peace, but you know Islam is not peace. In this world, we have prime ministers, ministers, TV stations saying Islam is wonderful, but you know that this is a big fat lie. So do we follow the word or we follow God, our holy Lord? It's up to you. Well, um, yeah, like I don't have um, really any problem with, but again, I don't have much knowledge uh, with Jesus, but um, except from Islam knowledge about Isa, but um, I, I personally don't think I I don't want those uh, uh, gay people go to hell. Um, no, friend, it's like, not up to you. It's not up to me. It's not, this is not about opinion. Heaven and hell is a place created by God. People who don't believe in hell and heaven, they do those things or they do whatever they want. You know, so why you are so worried about them? Are you a gay? No, but uh, I work with one couple of people. Okay, well, were, okay well, well, you know, we, we pray that this person We'll see what is right and what's wrong in the future. But obviously, he don't care to be uh, to be with Jesus. He don't care. This is not his uh, intention. He prefer his you know sexual uh, enjoyment more than anything. You know, and this is not only for gays. I mean, who said this is only gays? Will uh, uh, you know anyone who do doing bad things? He will end where he deserve to be, where he decide to be. It's your decision. If I, you know, a firefighter, he comes to your house, he knocks at your door, says, hey, there's a fire coming to your house. You say, don't knock at my door no more. I don't care. So when the fire comes, don't complain. You're saying to me, I don't think they deserve. Who said so? Well, I met a couple of people. They seem... My friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. It's not me. It's not you. I'm not judging people. I'm not the one who say they are bad. I have a book. The book says, if you want to enter my heaven, you do this. Forget about bad and good now. If you want to enter my house, you have to do this and that. You don't want to enter my house, it's up to you. So if they did refuse the terms and condition of the invitation, it was their decision. It's not God who sent them to hell. They choose. God, he says, you want to kill? Well, you are doing wrong. You are against my teaching. So if I go and kill, if I go and rape, if I go and steal, well, obviously I'm refusing all the terms and conditions to be qualified to go to heaven. So it's not God who rejected you. It's you who refused God. So what people do, they play victim. They say, what kind of God he will send me to hell? It's you who send yourself to hell. God did not send you. God, he warned you. He says, it's not up to you. You know, I did not create myself. You know, did God even ask me if, can I create you? So a human being, he think he's God. Suddenly he is the one who decides what is good, what is bad. And if this is the case, we'll go and do as you wish. While you're complaining. You can't complain if this is your wish. It's not my, uh, it's just something didn't really make total sense to me when I think about it because, um, uh, 
uh, actually, I don't even know what is the Ten Commandment, but um, I know that it, you know if you steal, you hurting somebody. If you if you kill, you you hurting hurting somebody. Um, you know, if you lie, you you're hurting somebody. Mm. But if uh, if I go to work and there is a lady and she's a lesbian. She doesn't hurt nobody. She's just a lesbian. No, you see, according to the Bible, you are hurting God. Why? Because this is a body. God, he gave it to you. You don't own it. You don't own the body. You see, when I do commit sin, this is not only for lesbian. It's not only for gays. This is for anything Christians, people, they do, or non-Christians. You have a body. It's a gift from God. It's not your body. Who said this is your body? So well, that's why my father. As an example, if you kill yourself, if you commit suicide, listen, Muhammad. If somebody, if somebody commits suicide, he did not kill anybody. He did not hurt anyone. But this is not your body. Oh, you, God did not give you a life. He did not give you a authority to take your life. He gave it to you. You have to give it back as he gave you. So if you if you say to me, I'm going to borrow from you one hundred dollar, and then you decide. Uh, that's your. This is your money. You do whatever you wish with it. But this is a wrong, wrong idea. It's not you who made the life. It's not you who created yourself. It's not you who owned that body. This body is not does not belong to you. So when you decide to do as you wish, you 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 just you are using the body he gave to you as a gift. You have to return it. We are borrowing life. We are. We don't own the life. So he gave you, he gave you, he 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 gave you birth, and you are clean. Why mm -hmm. why you want to give back the body to God, and you are it's full of dirt. So when you kill, you are dirty. When you steal, you are dirty. When you are lying, you are dirty. When you are fornicating, you are. You, you, I mean, you name it. This is not only about gays and lesbians. Anything. This is the Bible. This is what it say teach. So you want to go with God. You want to be with God. Well, you bring to Him what He gave you, as He gave it to you. And if you have some wound there, well, at least apologize for it. Pray for repentance. It's like borrowing a car, I give it to you. And then you bring me the car and there's no fault. The tires are gone. The paint is gone. The doors are gone. The radio is gone. The battery is gone. And you say, what's wrong with that? That's what you're saying. You say, isn't this my car? That's not your car. Okay, I think I understand a little bit. Um, and um, CP, what what would you say is what make you really strong, make you believe in Jesus, make you a Christian? What's the one thing or two things? What, where should I look uh, if I want to investigate this religion? How can I feel? How you're feeling? Because first, the first thing we do. I nice feeling uh, that I don't think, if, you know. Yeah, two days ago I, I had some question, but I still, you know, I believe, uh, you know, I'm a Muslim, and even when you convert to become a Muslim, they say all your past sin is forgiven. Is it same in Christianity as well? Like how I, I well, first of all, I can now, thanks God, I you are not a Muslim no more. But you know how many things I did, I, I cannot write it down to repent at all. So. Yeah, no problem. My friend, this is not for me to forgive your sin, it's God. However, if you are a person who is, uh, when you repent from your heart, it's not because you become a Christian, your sin is forgiven. No, you know, this is, this is, this is not true. Your sin is forgiven if you believe in Jesus, not because you become a Christian, because there's many, they become a Christian by name. So if you believe in Jesus, that he can forgive your sin. And if you repent to him, and you promise him that you will fight your sin, and you prove it to him, you cannot fool God, you cannot bribe God, you cannot give the nation, you know, as Muhammad he did, or he claimed, uh, you know, you kiss a black stone, or your sin is forgiven, or you say the name of Jesus 100 times. That doesn't work in Christianity. So you repent from your heart, and you believe that the one you are repenting to, which is the Messiah, he have the authority to forgive your sin, and you ask him to forgive your sin, and then the Messiah, he examine your heart, he examine your mind, he examine how truthful you are, and based on that, he will decide. That's what all the Bible teach. That's why Jesus said many times, 
go and your sin is forgiven. The Jews, they said, who is this person who forgives sin? Only God can forgive sin. And Jesus said to them, you can't read their mind. He said to them, which one is easier to say, go and your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk? So you can be forgiven and don't think you are filthy and I am clean. Who said that? Do you know how many sin I did? If I speak uh, about Jesus, if I debate Muslim, it doesn't mean that I am the holy man who came from the sky and he is clean and he did not commit sin and he is the perfect person. And no, this is not true. But how do I clean myself? You can clean yourself by believing by the Messiah, by promising from your heart. I can hear that you are crying. So if you know your tears will wash your sin because the Lord is listening. The Lord is our witness. The Lord is the one who can tell if you are truthful or not. And if you are truthful, he will forgive you. Jesus, he said, come to me, knock at my door, and I will open for you. So all what you need to do, my friend, you come to the Messiah today before you sleep, go down on your knee and pray to the Messiah and say to him, I, be I believe in you. I believe that you are my savior. I am a sinner. Christian Prince is a sinner too. We are sinners. We need you. Pray for me too. And I will pray for you. Pray to the Messiah so he can save you. Pray for him to forgive you. And trust me, his promises is always true. Whoever believe in me and die, he will live, the Messiah said. So if you believe in what he said, if you do what he said, you are going to be with him guaranteed. I heard your tears, my friend. I can hear your voice. Accept the Messiah and be saved. Do you need to do baptism? Say, I believe in the Messiah first, and then we can go to the baptism. The baptism is just you, you know, announcing yourself to be a Christian, but it's not like the mission impossible. No. You can still be a Christian. What if a person, he have nobody around him, to do baptism for him. So what? The Messiah, he gave a promise to, for, for a person who was in the cross next to him. He did not do baptism. He said to him, today you will be with me in heaven. So my friend, baptism is something later you can do, we will see. But for now, do you accept the Messiah as your savior? You know, I, um, I hid Bible in my house. I have uh, King James Bible. But I cannot understand, like, it's, uh, I try to read it, but, like, it's, it's, because it's before, like, old, because old before you were reading it, you were reading it as a Muslim, you are angry from this book, this book is wrong for you, this book is bad, and it doesn't matter, by the way, what the uh, version is translation, King James is not a, there's nothing called King James, right? it is a translation of King James, so, the Bible is the Bible, you know, and if you read it from your heart, then your heart will be there. If you read it with hatred and anger, then you will not find yourself. So now you have a different start because now you are not a Muslim no more. Now when you read, you will read a different way. You will see different things. Read from your heart, not from your eyes only. You see, when I read, uh, especially the Bible, I don't read really like everybody. I live the story. Maybe you can do that. I don't know how, how good you can be in that, but because every person is different. But when you read a story, try to be there. You know, try to imagine that you, okay, this is the Messiah. He is talking. The crowd is there. Uh, he is saying this, like, again, Yeshua, he said, uh, uh, he answered in a parable, saying, he said that the kingdom of heaven compared to the man who was the king, who made a wedding feast for his son. Look how beautiful. Read it. Imagine it. Imagine the parable he's given you. The, the Lord himself, he used images to explain to mankind who is he and what he wants from you. And the reason he used parable because simply we are growing children. You see, we might be 16 years old, we might be 60 years old, we might be 90 years old, but all of us, we are just kids. And we need images. 
then the images is what is our language our language is images i say a chair in your head you have an image i say uh, a cow in your head you have an image even though you are saying a word everything is connected to images in our life so the lord he used images to explain to you because he knew that we are not super comprehended people we are human we are limited so the parable is so my people they may understand so read them like now we open in front of us matthew 22 beautiful story read it and see how amazing it is try to understand try to live the story not to be just a person who read it So what do you think, Muhammad? I see we are flipping. Matthew, what? Matthew 22. Uh, yeah. I will send you a link. Here we go. Let me send you a link. You know? So you can open it from your side. Easier. The marriage of the king's son. Yeah, but you see here, Jesus is talking as if he is telling a story, you know, it's like, it sounds like a fiction story, you know, but he meant something else. The story is about something important, about someone important, but it's supposed to, to be about someone else. So you can read it. I don't know what language you speak, your original language. You can speak in your original language too. I'm sure you can find the Bible for the same chapter in your own language. I think that will help better. Okay, I will do it. All right. Um, so what do you think? You, 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 uh, do you feel like accepting the Messiah in your heart and then you will read later or you cannot make decision? It's up to you. It's your feeling. I cannot tell you what to do. What do you feel? Do you I'm feel you accept the Messiah? I get a strong feeling. So but, do, you, uh, do you accept the Messiah? I want to ask you though, you never answered me like what made you a Christian? Would make you feel your faith. Um, confidence, my friend. You... Confidence. When you are a person, I I examine. I examine uh, uh, what the Lord He says to me. I examine His ethic. I examine His teaching. I examine what He do. I examine what He did. I examine what He said. And did He say what He say? What what He promised? The Messiah. He never failed the exam. He said, "Forgive." And the cross, He forgive them. I mean, imagine people are killing you. People are putting nails in your hands, in your feet, spitting at you, making fun of you. And you are the Messiah himself who resurrects people from death. Saying, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. The Messiah, obviously, he have a lot of love. To the point he loves even those who are killing him. If there is a better person to follow. So what makes me confident that the Messiah, he did not say something and he did something like Muhammad. Muhammad, he told Muslims, when you see a woman, put your head in the floor. But Muhammad, he went to his own son, wife, and he flirted with the wife when the husband is not there. He saw a woman in the street. He keeps staring, 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 and then he got horny. The man, he says something, he do something else. And he went to Zainab, right? He went to Zainab, and there's the other story about the women walking by. There's tons of stories. So we have the Messiah. The Messiah, he challenged the Jews. Who of you can prove me to be a sinner? Nobody there. Nobody there. So we have thousands of witnesses witnessing for how holy he was, not how bad he is. And the top for me, this is why we Christian, we value very much the crucifixion of Jesus. Because in the cross, he show his amazing, endless love to us. Forgive them, Father. The people, they were shouting, his blood is in our hands and the hands of our children, screaming with hatred and anger. The Messiah still saying, forgive them, Father. So the Messiah, my friend, there's no one like him. When he said, love your enemy, this is 2,000 years ago. Who can, who can say such a thing? Love your enemy. I mean, nobody will, like, what? Love my enemy? Are you kidding me? I will kill my enemy. I will eat them alive. I will torture them. I will take revenge, Jesus said, no. 
love your enemy. Pray for them. Pray for them, my enemy. How in the world am I going to pray for them? They are my enemies. So when Muslims, when we say to the Muslims, we, Muslims, we love you, Muslims, they think we are making fun of them. They think we are lying. But this is the command of the Lord. Love your enemy. Pray for them. Pray for those who curse you. Can you find better person than the teaching of Christ, Muhammad? I don't think so. But um, you remember when I first called you, and um, I apologize, I mock you, but really I don't understand. Uh, my Muslim friends, they told me, you know, uh, nobody saw Jesus except people who are already his apostle and uh, some women, only they viewed, only they saw him after the tomb. Is it true? Or more people they saw him? Well, my friend, no. The Bible mentioned there's many, many people they saw Jesus. But let us go by by the disciples. I mean, in Islam, you can prove a crime by two. So now we have a 12, and this is not enough? <laughs> 12 and two women. That's what they said to you, right? So, Hello. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, they're, 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 uh, uh, they're, they're excused. Uh, it's very funny and very like it's, it's not even smart because even if there's four people they saw me in Islam you can send the person to the to, to be hanged or to be crucified by two witnesses a woman or a man they can be stoned by four witnesses so if after after the after the crucifixion and after the resurrection if the ones who saw Jesus only 12 is that bad is that not enough didn't Jesus show, show them his hands and his feet? He did, I think. Okay, so what, so what is the excuse? It's a funny excuse. You know? Well, I how think many, what... How many people they saw Allah? Nobody. So here you see the hypocrisy. So if, if did Muhammad even see what happened? So how do you believe in Muhammad? Let us talk about witnesses. If you don't believe anyone except the one who witnessed, was Muhammad one of the witnesses? They have only one guy. It came 600 years after Jesus. Uh, I watched a lot of videos, like all you people. I watched um, for a few months, actually, changed my whole faith. But um, like I watched your video, I watched the David Wood video, I watched a busted prophet video i watch uh, sheikh uthman video i watch hamza video i watch everybody try to make sense but um so what the one of the things um uh, uh, a busted prophet he said like there is nobody uh, witness no other civilization they wrote down about the moon split so that's why he say you know in islam it probably couldn't happen but uh, so that's what I meant about uh, the witnesses. Like apostles, they they already, you know, they believe in Jesus. They are already part of his uh, part of his following. What about like some Romans or some people? Who well, you can go right now. You can search. There's tons of reference about the crucifixion of Jesus written by non-Christians, historian, uh, but they are not Christians. You know, so this is well, not. I believe it is cruc crucifixion. I mean, like the resurrection. Part. Yeah, they're talking part. about what happened to Jesus and what, what the Christian, they saw. I mean, a historian who write about it, he write what he heard, unless he was there. So the one who was interested in writing what they saw is the one who is there and the one who believe. And actually, even the Quran says, the Jews, they said, we killed Jesus, right? Even the Quran says, the Jews, they say, we killed Jesus. So we have a witness, at least, from the Jews that they witnessed that they killed Jesus. All of them, they agree, we killed Jesus. Okay. Now, the Messiah, he appeared, and he appeared to the ones of those who want to kill Jesus, or they want to kill the followers of Jesus, like Paul. Paul was the enemy of Jesus. If you go as an example to 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse number 3, you can read from verse number 3 to 9, 10. You will see 
uh, how 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 the Bible describe about how many people they you know uh, uh, they, they they witness the crucifixion of uh, the, the resurrection of Jesus. So Paul himself, who was not one of the disciples at the time of crucifixion, he was an enemy of Jesus. He want to go after the Christians. Jesus himself he appeared to him, and this is one of the enemies. And then in in First Corinthians it says he appeared to more than five hundred brothers after the crucifixion. More than five hundred brothers. So this was just one verse in the Bible. So. If those are not enough, what well, 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 does mean Jesus? He have to appear every day to everybody to convince us. Then, no, I'm not unreasonable. I just want to check out the reference. My but, friend, uh, my friend, it's not what reference says can prove to us that because history can be written by somebody have an agenda. You know, I can be. I am a Christian. I I support. You know, I believe in Jesus. So, and I live in time of Jesus, I would say, well, there's a million people live so Jesus. This is not what make people believe or not. When I focus in the Messiah, I focus in the quality. If Jesus was just a person like us, he would do what we do. He would be after women, he would be after money, he would be after fame, he would be after power, he would not be in any of us. But Jesus, he did what no human can do. Not only he can make do miracles, but he did the impossible for a man, which is not to commit sin. So when I believe in Jesus, it's not because there is a witness who saw Jesus after crucifixion. I believe in him because he is not like any of us. And when Jesus said, I am from above and you are from below, he was not making things up. He proved it. He is holy. His ethic is beyond ethic. His honesty is beyond honesty. His purity is beyond purity. So talk is cheap. I can say to you, I'm a good person. But all of us, we say that. Give somebody a lot of money and tell him to hide it for you. Two days after, he will feel greedy. He might deny that you gave him the money even your brother from your own family jesus he passed the test of every human being and he never failed he never commits sin that would make me believe in jesus otherwise people say things i can claim things and as long as you don't accompany me how you will know I can go online and say, I am a person who pray all day, fast all day, etc. But is this true? And even if that's true, I pray all day and fast all day. But my heart is full of hatred and my brain is full of sin. Jesus, he loved the enemy on the cross. I mean, what is after the cross? If Jesus is just a man like everybody, Try to touch my touch me with a nail. Put a nail in my hand and see what will happen to you. I will go crazy on you. Mm -hmm. I will be cursing you. I will be doing to you. I will see what I you know. But this is not a, this is not even humane to do. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. What kind of patience you have? What kind of love you have? What kind of forgiveness you have? This is not human being forgiveness this is from above yeah uh, i agree here from what and then i don't know enough knowledge but uh, yeah he never sinned right he's always even I think there is a time um, is it Luke or somebody said to Jesus like they're never gonna kill you and he said be gone be gone from me Satan or something yeah to Peter he yeah knew Peter so he knew that 
so the implication is he knew he was going to get killed, but uh, he accepted. And uh, when they when they he show his feet and his hand, you're saying that's to show they are healed. They don't have um, nailed nails through it anymore, right? Uh, is that why yeah. why he show his hand and feet? Well, you know, because uh, you know, like uh, you know, a, a person who don't want to believe, even even he appear in front of them. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. We buried him, you know. We buried him, and we, you know, they killed him. We were there. We saw his blood. We saw his hands. We, we, we are the one who took him to the to the tomb. How he's coming back? And this is why, you know. He saw. He, he showed them his hands because maybe this is a different person. Maybe this is not him. Maybe this is a uh, we're imagining. This is why Jesus he said, "Okay, this is my hands. This is my feet. Touch, not only see. Touch them." And where did he go after three days? After where is Jesus right now? In heaven, the kingdom of the Lord. <laughs> You know that is beyond beyond my uh, my GPS. <laughs> I cannot tell you where. <laughs> but obviously, so you, uh, the kingdom of the Lord is, uh, is 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 a different dimension, and it is different space from what we have. You know, and this is why even when the Muslims they say that Jesus right now is alive. Okay, why Jesus is alive? I mean, everybody die. Why why is he alive? Obviously, there's a plan. Uh, in Christianity, there is there, uh, God. He can't have a plan for people. He can't take them to heaven right away. The Bible says that when the Messiah, he was, uh, you know, he was resurrected. Uh, many th saints they resurrected with him from the dead. So God, he can decide to take as he wish when he wish, not necessarily after judgment day. In Christianity, but Jesus, he is alive for a reason. For he is. From above anyway and you no one can really kill the lord you see when they kill they kill the flesh so he came from above he go back to above we are from below we stay below and that the day come and the lord he invite us to be in his house in his kingdom is it true so all my my muslim grandmother all these people I never gonna see them in heaven because they're not. They didn't really My friend, maybe see. you can, maybe you can help them. Maybe you know, I don't know if she is still alive. Maybe you can talk to her. Maybe you can help her. What you can do? I mean, this is not in your hand. This is not. Uh, pray to the Lord. You know, I don't know what we. You know, I cannot tell you they will go to heaven because the Bible is so clear. I am the way. People who worship wrong God, they will not go to heaven. Even if my own father, he don't believe in Jesus, he will not go to heaven. Yeah, because I only know in Islam, like, if you know about Islam, but you don't believe in Islam, um, that means you're, you're covered, so you're not going to go to heaven. But what about people that are born in the Middle East, they're born in India, they don't know about, they, you know... Uh, Perfect. Years ago, Perfect. You know, there's, there's no way somebody do not know about Jesus yet in the Middle East. I mean, he is born in the Middle East. Every mosque speak about Jesus. So how Muslims do not know about Jesus? They knew, but they are worshiping the we wrong. Know about Isa, right? We know there. Even now, I have to go learn Jesus' life because um, they teach me Isa. They don't teach me. No problem, but still, there are Christian there. Christianity is is coming from there. So, uh, we have uh, we have the internet, we have radio. Uh, the Muslim they live between the Christians. Christians are around them. There are churches in the Middle East. So a Muslim who do not know about Jesus and what the Christian believe, this is impossible. They refuse. It's a choice, my friend. Cry not for anyone. I cry for nobody, even if on my own brother, on my own blood. Or my own son or my own daughter they decide to reject jesus i will cry to nobody i will never i will never even I, I don't, you go 
It's your choice. Oh, why don't cry for them? I will never cry to anyone. People, they do. They get what they deserve. And they go where they belong. You know, when, when somebody goes, uh, I, went, uh, I went vacation, you know. Uh, not a vacation, really. I did a seminar. So I go to a country. I went to Asia. Some, some, some countries in Asia, they are very well-known prostitution, like Thailand. But I go where I belong. People who they are going for prostitution, they will find prostitution anywhere. Not, you don't have to go to Thailand to be there. There's prostitution in the USA. There's a prostitution in, in Europe. You know? So, but people who they are, the people, they go from country to country for the sake of prostitution. They go where they belong. So if a person, he's, you know, he decides that night club is his house, not Jesus, why I want to cry for him? I will not. If somebody decides that drugs is his love, not Jesus, why we shall cry for this person, even if he's our own family? We try to help the person he don't want, this is his business. Never cry for anybody. Not because you don't love the people, no. But this is what they did to themselves. Yeah, well. It's not you who did it to them. They did that to themselves. They have all their life journey, and they did not wake up. Well, you die, it's too late. That's why I'm saying to you, accept the Messiah now, my friend. Before it is too late. Yeah, the reason I feel pain is because uh, you you told me, oh, you want to have heaven with the endless penis? I don't want to have that, but I want to go to heaven, see my grandmother, see my grandfather. I miss them. So that's why I feel pain. But, I understand. Uh, I, you know, for me, maybe I am a stronger person than you. I have different personality. We are different. There's some people they are very sensitive. There's people they are less sensitive. But for me, I understand reality that God, He make decisions, and people they choose where they want to be. So if I cry for a person or not, I'm not going to change anything. As simple as that. If my tears will help, I will cry until tomorrow. But that will not change anything. So what do you think, Muhammad? Do you accept the Messiah as your savior? Yeah, I accept. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And me, myself, I apologize for being harsh with you. But you see, being harsh, being harsh, help. I wasn't harsh to be harsh. I wasn't harsh to hurt your feeling. I was harsh to save your soul. And the one who saved you is the Lord now. It's not a Christian prince. I'm so happy for you, my friend Muhammad. Let us pray. Let us all of us pray for our brother Muhammad, who called me to prove me, to prove me wrong many times who he uh, make a mockery of me, and maybe I made some mockery of him too. But the Lord always, he washed the hearts, he clean our soul. And the Lord today, the Lord, he says, there is a happiness in the kingdom of the Lord, for one soul is saved. And today, my friend Muhammad, your soul is in heaven. Yet you are alive between us. A happiness there is in heaven for you. This is how much the Lord He loves you. So don't cry, my friend. You can cry, but not from sadness. You can cry from happiness. For today you are born again. This is what born again mean. Born again does not mean I'm going to go go inside my mother womb, and then I'm going to give birth to me. I'm born again with the Messiah. New life. You start. I hear you crying. I hear your in, tears. In uh, in Islam, we don't really like. Uh, they didn't like um, 
revert is it same or convert my friend so if i, I used to who, think... who i am to like you or not you have the lord himself <laughs> who is a christian prince to like you or not you have the lord the messiah himself you have the king of kings he don't only like you he loves you from now on but stop worrying people, muhammad about people if you will revert um, or convert it's the same you are even better than a christian who is born because many of them they are born in a christian family they never choose jesus you are a person who choose him now many they are born in a christian family they wear a cross but they are not christians you are a person who chose to change his direction. So you are now more close to the Messiah than someone who is born in a Christian family. For you decide to change all your life. You decide to throw all the books you have and to follow him. So don't worry about people. The Lord, he loves you. And the, lo the Lord who loves you, he will send people who share love with you. For the Lord, for the Father, for the King of Kings. He loves us, He came. For God, He loved the world. He sent His only begotten Son to save us. And you are one of many. And the Lord, He loves you. Don't think about others. Don't worry about others. Be happy for your salvation. And I advise you to go and read the Bible. You choose any one of them you want. Matthew, John, Luke, etc. It's up to you. But again, <clears throat> I advise you to read. Uh, maybe you start with the parable of Jesus, because that will make him more close to you. And you can maybe play an audio, close your eyes and imagine yourself there. Imagine Jesus speaking in the mount. Imagine those people gathering from everywhere. Imagine the Messiah is blessing the food and feeding thousands from little tiny basket of food, imagine yourself you are there and feel the story, live the story, not only listen to it. Do you have any suggestion for me to, to start my journey? Well, you know what? The Lord, he blessed me with, when I open, I did not choose. I click, and I got Matthew 22 in the front of my face. So today, as long as this is the Lord the choice for me, it's not me who chose it. I did not even open the Bible. I did not flip pages. I found this one in front of me. I send you the link. Read it, live it, and enjoy it, and try to understand what the Messiah is saying to you. And here you will notice, by the way, that in the Bible there is a personal experience. We don't need interpretation of Ibn Abbas because the Lord here is speaking to you. And you will see something me I did not see. And you will feel something me I did not feel. Why? Because this is a personal experience with the Lord. He speak to you. You, not words for everybody. It is to you. So live it, my friend, and feel it. For this will be between you and him. It's not interpretation. We might need interpretation sometime. Oh, this word is hard for us to understand. Let's see the translation. Uh, you know, something like here is not uh, so clear. But this is a parable. That's why I'm asking you to read the parable here. Because this is the easiest way. How the Lord himself, he explained himself to you. So you can get it closer to him. Thank you. You're welcome, Muhammad. And again, I apologize from you, my brother, if I hurt your feeling ever. And I pray to you, and I ask all the Christians here to pray to Muhammad, to his family, that they will see the Lord. They will receive our brother Muhammad with good heart. And I believe that the Lord, he will be with you. If the Lord is with me, who could be against me? Just be with the Lord Muhammad. And you will see. Thank you very much for calling. Do you want to say anything to those people here before we finish for today?
I don't know if they're happy to have a donkey brother, but I'm a brother. For, I'll be your brother. You are not a donkey, my friend. You are not. <laughs> you are not. Okay. I feel like I need history lesson to read a little bit because I don't know what uh, Sadducees and Pharisees. I don't know. Yeah, well, this is just uh, names for a group of people. You can you will learn about them. You can search in Google what is Pharisees, what does mean. You know, for the faster answer, you know, fast answer. Uh, th those are easy. You know, you do not need the special education. Uh, it's it's a group by what they do sometime, or sometime it is who they are as an ethnic or sometime as a group of religious people, like when we say Jehovah's Witnesses, when we say the tax collector, when we say, uh, like now we say tax collector is IRS in USA, you know? So when I say IRS, everybody knows what is that mean, because this is who they are in USA, they call them. So you can search that very easy in Google, so you can find out. But I advise you start from here, start from the parable of Jesus speaking to you, and try to understand more, and live more rise in your life I'll start reading from today all right well I pray for you Muhammad and uh, let us all of us pray for our friend our brother Muhammad today in the Lord he received him today the Lord he opened his heart today the Lord he brought him he was lost and he was found he was ignorant and he learned he was a sinner and he repent and today he denied the evil teaching and the evil books and he accepted the love of Jesus we pray to the Lord that he will make him better than us better Christian than all of us so he can guide more people he can be a messenger he can be a disciple he can be an apostle he can be a message to be delivered for those who need healing and those who need to be saved. We pray for you, my friend Muhammad, and all those people here. They pray with me. In his name we pray. I mean to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to hear it from you. It sounds good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to him. Hallelujah. I mean. Thank you, Muhammad, and feel free in the future to contact me or even to call me. If you have a question about the Messiah or the Bible, all right? Well, I don't think uh, you're gonna let me call you because. Oh again... no, no, no! I will treat you differently. You see, I say no Christian call call me, but I will treat you differently. You know, exception. Here we go. <laughs> exception to you, no, because you have a questions to learn. I will take your call, but then after that, you know, when you have more, uh, you know, firm knowledge. You do not need me anymore. Maybe you can ask, uh, you can join a church or etc. And you can learn better and better. All right, Muhammad. All right. Thank All right, you. my friend. God thank bless you. you. Take care. Yeah, God Take bless care. you. All right. We are very happy for our brother here. You see, this is, you know, the, what I do is really hard. I stay here for many hours. My knee hurt. My back hurt, my eyes hurt. But then you see, one person, he accepted the Messiah. And then one person, he bring his family. Don't you think you just save one person? The Lord today made me come and speak to him. And the Lord, he saved him, not me. But all the tiring you do, all the work you do, it's become a pleasure when you see people leaving cult and accepting the Messiah. So I'm very grateful for the Lord today that he sent us our brother Muhammad. And by the way, you can keep your name, no problem, you know. But in the future, if you like, you can change it. The Lord, he know you by your heart, not by your names. The name doesn't count. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them, not from their names. And today, our friend, our brother Muhammad, he decided to become a tree who gave nice fruits, good fruits, the fruit of Jesus. I'm very grateful 
for all of you for your support grateful for the prayer we made you made for our friend Muhammad because trust me he needs more now Satan will try to push him Satan he will try to play with him Satan he will be angry from him and the second you join with Jesus Satan is so angry from you when you are not with Jesus why even he will care for you you are already lost so be vigilant be aware be strong I saw somebody in the chat saying a brother joined the Catholic Church some people they have a foolishness and they are not no Christians Christianity is not a Catholic is not a Protestant is not Orthodox Christianity is Jesus whoever believe in me and die he will live those who follow churches names they don't know even Jesus yet Those people who try to deceive us and divide us, they are no Christians. We follow Jesus. No bishop. No pope. No priest. No Christian prince. No man. We don't even follow Paul. We don't follow even disciples. We follow Jesus. Or they themselves, they follow Jesus too. Stupidity is from the devil. And the devil play you. And he try to use you. Anyone who divide us, he is working for the devil. He's no Christian. Or he never met Christ yet. All churches are my church. As long as they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit as long they believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the salvation of Jesus, the baptism of Jesus. I don't care what the name of your church. Holy is his name, and his church is holy. It doesn't matter what the name of the church. And the church is holy only when the people inside the church, they are believing in the Messiah, following the Messiah, accepting the Messiah as Savior. Not a man, not a woman, not a money, not a prince, not a king. The Savior is one. And no other name beside his name. I want to say thank you all for being here. And I hope we will have more time. If I can come tomorrow, I will try. But I don't think so in the morning because we don't give time for people to watch this video. Because what people would happen, you know, for me, I don't mind really actually to come again and again. But what, what happened always, I notice that if you make two videos, people that watch the last one, the one before, nobody watch it. I don't know why, you know even if it is so important. So we want more people to notice, more people to see, more people to watch so they can learn because this is the whole purpose of what we do. We are not here to do entertainment, even though sometimes it's entertaining. We are not here to make fun of anyone, but we don't mind to laugh at the devil in order to show the Mohammedan or the Muslims how silly Islam is. But this is not the purpose. We are not here to laugh at the Muslims. We are here to save them. Even sometimes they say things make us laugh. But this is not the purpose. The purpose is to save. Today we publish our book, Deception of Allah, for free in the Indian Hindi, lang Hindi language. If you want to download the link, it's in the previous video. Click at the info or you can go to Patreon and you can download the book. And we have many, many books published already for free. So check out your language and see if we have it for you for free. I want to say thank you all for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube 
I saw somebody saying, so if you don't subscribe to YouTube, you cannot watch the video. My friend, you subscribe or not, so you can watch the video. I don't know what people understand about YouTube. However, you can subscribe too to our Patreon, so you can receive notification because YouTube, for some reason, don't send notification to everybody. So stay up in touch, stay up updated, and join us in Patreon if you care. And I will see you soon again. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Christ save. Muhammad deceive. And Allah is the best of deceiver. And our God, our Lord, is the only Savior. He is not the best of Savior. He is the only Savior. He is the only one. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 